Hey, great friends. What's happening today is Wednesday. It is February 1st, which means new promo code coming your way here for Tory Holistics in just one second. Uh, today's going to be a crazy day because so much news happened either late yesterday or early this morning. And obviously we're going to get to the whole Tom Brady situation. So stay with us. We're just getting rolling here. Uh, we are in the seven mile casino studio, seven mile casino.com. Interesting. I had a conversation early this morning with our friends down at seven mile casino. And the thing we're talking about, and I'll tell you why, because um, I'd received some messages from some great friends who said, Hey man, um, when's the next time we're going to all get together and do something like maybe we did last year when we had that dinner at seven mile casino. And I said, I'm so glad you asked because I've already started talking to seven mile casino about what we're going to do together in Q1 sounds kind of fancy to say Q1 of 2023. And we're already talking about what we're going to do together in March. And I don't want to give it away, but I think you guys are going to love it because it's different. It's not just, hey, we're all getting together for dinner. We're all going to hang out. I don't want to say yet until I can give you the date, but I think you guys are going to love it. Seven Mile Casino. Their website is sevenmilecasino.com. Sammy's Restaurant and Bar, which is Sammy's Woodfire Pizza. Table games, blackjack, poker, pie gal, and others right here in the casino side. All condensed for people who want great food and great gaming. Seven Mile Casino, seven minutes south of downtown San Diego. Sevenmilecasino.com. All right. Uh, also, speaking of uh, Tory Holistics, I had a really great conversation yesterday with Ruthie Edelson, who you guys all know, who's the marketing director at Tory Holistics. And um, man, we we got some things cooking with those guys too. So here's what I want to say. Always support our sponsors, please. Um, we have a lot of great places here in San Diego where if you want to buy cannabis products for whatever reason, could be pain management, could be sleep, could be related to just wanting to use it recreationally. That's on you, man. But there is a new promo code today. And if I'm being completely, utterly honest, I don't know what it is. <laughs> I just don't know what it is. Do you know what it is, Alex? Because I don't think I received an email from Ruthie saying what it is. But guess what, Scott? This Tell is me. a great teachable moment yeah. for everybody. Uh huh. Go to kaplanandcrew.com. Mm -hmm. Why don't you go ahead and do it while I talk about it? Go to kaplanandcrew.com. Okay. Click on the Tory Holistics logo. And you will see the promo code. So if anybody te is texting you or texting me, that's all you got to do. Go to Tory Hill, go to CaplanCrew.com, click that Tory Holistics logo, mm -hmm. and you're going to see that the promo code for the month of February is Flowers23. Wow. Uh, dude, great moment for us to teach. You're exactly right. In fact, I, uh, when I say teach, I mean implore people to go to use our website. I was actually uh, reading an email this morning from Cousin Nancy, and it had all of our statistics on it from mm -hmm. uh, the last month. And when you tell people to go to our website, kaplanandcrew.com, for the promo code for Tory Holistics, that's one reason to go. Another reason to go, and by the way, just one last final time, Flowers23 is the yes, promo sir. code. Tory Holistics in Sorrento Valley, California Holistics in Chula Vista. And I think another Flowers. Flowers. Right, right. Not, not flower, S. like Correct. Flowers23. Like Correct. the year, like Michael Jordan. Um, another reason to go to our website, kaplanandcrew.com, is to learn more about I Thrive Lean. Now, this is the weight loss plan that Alex has been on for the last three and a half months. We talked about this yesterday. We got these beautiful pictures from Alex's wedding in early November. And here we are now in early February. And that was like 30, 30 some odd pounds ago, you know. Um, so he started it before the wedding and actually has told us the story of trying to put on the same suit that he wore at the wedding. And it's just way too big now. So if you're trying to lose weight and you can't change your, your eating habits, you don't, you can't change your, your workout game plan, you can still lose weight by using the iThrive Lean program. Another great reason to go to kaplanandcrew.com, click on iThrive, you'll learn all about it. Hey, um, I want to mention to you Penske San Diego, PenskeSanDiego.com, because they've got over 1,000 vehicles in their 12 different dealerships across their nine brands. But if you want to make things really fast, easy, and actually it's a lot of fun, just use their website, PenskeSanDiego.com. Because every car, every make, every model, plus all the certified pre-owned right there waiting for you, PenskeSanDiego.com. And then the last thing I want to mention to you is thank you to everybody who has been buying Athletic Greens. I need this more than ever before right now because I've been dealing with a little bit of a cold over the last couple of days. 75 vitamins, minerals, nutrients, probiotics all here. So instead of popping pills every morning, I just take this and I know it looks green and it probably looks gross. I promise you the taste is great and it's something you're going to Jones for. And listen, anybody who's recently bought it, 
Let me know in 30 days if you notice the difference. Because here's what I notice. When I'm on it, I feel great. I've got a lot of energy. It's sustained. Um, I sleep really well. I clean out the bowels really nicely. Okay. But um, when I'm off of it, I can feel the difference. Check them out. Athleticgreens.com slash Kaplan. Uh, all the, the discounts are built in. The five free travel packs, the one-year supply of vitamin D, the bottle, the canister, the powder, the beautiful packaging. And, uh, and you'll get yourself a subscription. You'll be very happy about that. Athleticgreens.com slash Kaplan. All right, we got a lot to get to today. Let's get to it. Hey, great friends. What's happening? It is Wednesday afternoon. This is Kaplan and crew with Grande and the Brown Man coming to you from the Seven Mile Casino Studios, sevenmilecasino.com. I want to say good afternoon to all of our radio listeners on 1090 tuning in throughout Southern California. Uh, appreciate you guys who still listen on the radio. Want to say what's up to all of our YouTube viewers who are involved in our live YouTube chat. So get in on that. To all of our podcasters who listen on your own time on Apple, Spotify, or whatever other audio podcast platform you use. And tonight, we will be on TV, Channel 4 San Diego's our home base, part of the Cox Your View Network. So really, you can find us anywhere. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, our email newsletter, our website. We are like the easiest people on the planet to find. So before we jump in today, and obviously, big story, Tom Brady retires. He says this time for good. I, I, I believe him this time. Fellas, isn't it interesting that yesterday we were having this conversation? And I remember at one point, Alex, you said, so we all think that Tom Brady will play again. And we weren't even thinking about him playing for a year. We were actually thinking, you know what? If you're the 49ers, maybe he finishes his career with you and he plays for another two years or so. And you might be thinking, but dude, he's 45. I get it. But if you just look at the numbers he produced this year, he's a top five quarterback in the NFL statistically still. So yesterday, we're talking about Tom Brady possibly finishing his career with Vegas and Josh McDaniels, with San Francisco, his hometown team, and the possibility of partnering up with Kyle Shanahan. And literally in under 24 hours, Tom Brady releases a video, what looks like on the beach, somewhere I assume in Florida, and, uh, and he tells us he's retired. So that is definitely our lead story. Another story we're going to get into today is later yesterday when we got off the air, all the NFL coaching moves started to happen in Houston, uh, a, a crazy story in Denver. We're going to get to all of that stuff coming up. So stay with us. We're just getting on the airwaves before we get started. Grande, how you feeling today, pal? Me? Yeah. Why you ask it like that? Like I'm like now I'm like suspicious. Did I do something? No, mm -hmm. nope. Mm -hmm. Didn't do something. Did I miss something? No, no. It's just that yesterday uh, and Monday, I know a lot of uh -huh. people could hear from me that I was struggling. Yeah. And I don't think we all feel like you can catch a cold anymore. And I have one, no doubt. As you call. I had to call. <laughs> Dude, I, I have a legit cold. There's no doubt. Mm -hmm. I've had a runny mm -hmm. nose. I've had a headache. And I've had a little cough going for the last couple of days. And mm -hmm. you guys were busting my freaking balls over here on Monday. Like, yo, take a COVID test. And I don't want to take a COVID test because I don't want to know that I have COVID. Right. But, but just the same reason why I took the vaccination especially early on was because I got to think about other people, you know, and I can't mm -hmm. be going places and doing things and hanging out with people. If I think I might have it, I should at least know that I do or I don't. So anyway, so yesterday I wound up taking the COVID test and I got the COVID test from the government. You know how they send an email to the whole world? Hey, you want a couple of free yes. COVID tests? We'll send them to you. Good thing. Because I was re I seen yesterday in the news that we're like officially done with COVID in this country. In fact, like really? Yeah. When I don't mean like people won't get it. I mean, like come May of this year, president Biden has said vaccinations oh. and tests, you have to start paying for that stuff. We're, we're through the pandemic. So if, if you need a COVID test, you're going to pay for it. If you need a COVID vaccination, you're going to pay for it. This starts in May of this mm -hmm. year. And you know, that was just sort of the headlines of it all. Got it. 
So yesterday I go to take a COVID test and I don't know about everybody else. This is the first one I've taken in a really long time, a home test. It's freaking confusing. I, I, I was like, what the hell? I'm trying to follow every step, open the box, take out the this, take this, open it, don't touch this, make sure your hands are washed and dry, F put in six drops, but only six, and you have to put the, the thing on top of it, you can't be at an angle, and then you got to swish it around, and then you got to stick it up your nose, 15 seconds, swirl it all around, don't forget the other nostril, do that one too, then you got to stick the swab into the thing, and then close the book, and the whole time I'm panicking, <laughs> the whole time I'm in a state of panic, like, am I doing it right? Am I doing it mm -hmm. wrong? Have I screwed mm -hmm. it up? Have I infected mm -hmm. it with, with dirty hands? I mean, I'm a mess until, until I do it. I set an alarm for 15 minutes. I come back and I got one pink line. Two pink lines means positive. One pink line means negative. And I swear to you, I'm not joking. As soon as I saw the one pink line rather than the two pink lines, I just felt so much better. I mean, I was ready to go. I felt so much better and I still had a little bit of a headache and I still have the sniffles and I got a little bit of a cough, but knowing that I had one pink line rather than two and that the home test told me I was negative, I, I immediately felt a hundred times better. So I got to ask you, you still have stuff happening today, obviously, as you wipe your nose and cough. Like, can't, can't get around it. So, Cannot do it. So... Will you test again or one negative? You're good to go. What do you think I should do? I think if you're going places, mm -hmm. like you just said, like for other folks, mm -hmm. I would probably test before I bounce and meet with people. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you're just going to be home working and really whatever, you know, I think you'll be okay. I, I think it's more about you don't really want to be running around Cardiff and the Kraken and, and wherever else you go. If, if you if you are positive today right agreed agreed right so that's all i think if you're going to go out and about maybe just to be safe but yeah. um i mean yeah, that's how people operate they take a test and they move on yeah i do the same thing right so i took one covid test yesterday it was negative and i don't really want to take another one and i'll tell you man i'm not joking when i say i felt 100 times better prior to that i was like freezing i took a big old nap and I was freezing. I woke up, I'm, like, I'm freezing. Like I'm shaking my whole body. Shaking. I'm walking around the house with a big old blanket. I can't get warmed mm -hmm. up. I'm freezing. And I'm like, oh no, I probably have COVID. Took the test. Didn't have it. One test. One test. Right. So why do you bring up COVID and, and me? Well, you were saying yesterday that you and your girlfriend, excuse me, now your wife. <laughs> Don't mind me. Oh, you should take a test right now. <laughs> Don't mind me. I still got a little bit just, of a cough. Just swab the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, you, that's great. You were telling us that, that Mar wasn't feeling so hot. Yeah. You guys have been around um, a lot of people. Yeah. How you doing? And yesterday, um, she called out because she was feeling like trash. Mm -hmm. But on Monday, she tested negative like you. On Monday, she felt awful. Mm -hmm. On Sunday, she slept from about 12 p.m. to 9 p.m. because She went to Mexico on Saturday for a big family party. And that must have been a cesspool for COVID because I think there's about half the guests came back with some the TJ variant. And uh, so yesterday, she was like, do we have any more COVID tests? I still feel awful. And I was like, yeah. And she, I gave her one. And she said as soon as she put little drop, the little drop things on the little tablet, as the thing went up, she saw line, line, bang, 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 bang. And then um, she realized they were expired tests because <laughs> they weren't the ones the government sent. They were, you just had them in the house. So no I went to Target mm -hmm. and I got some. And by the way, test, in my opinion, she laughed at me. She said, how much do you think they cost? And I was like, uh, not $11 a pop. No way. $11 yeah. for one test? For one test? Not for two? Not for two, for one. I was like, uh, that's pretty expensive. Um, so I got her some and she did the test again. And yep, she's she she got two thick lines on that thing. Okay. Well, now you live with her, you're uh -huh. exposed to her. Right. I suspect no. But I had you. no symptoms except headache. I've just been I've had a headache. Mm -hmm. 
And I was like, that's all I got. I got, I'm fine. Mm -hmm. So, you know, according to the, the world, I have no symptoms. So I, re I ran around and prepared like it's the apocalypse. So I went grocery shopping. I, I, I did a bunch of stuff with the dog because I was like, we might be locked up in this house for the next five days. And uh, yeah, I woke up this morning feeling like ass, took a test, and I got two thick lines. They thick boys on that thing. Damn. So now this you- house is infested. So now you have a positive test. Mm -hmm. And will you take a second test to see if maybe you had a false positive? Oh, no, that thing was thick, dude. That thing's bright red. All right, but let me like, ask you this. Let me ask you this. You know how like the first line, if, if you only get one, it's negative? Yeah. My positive line is redder and thicker than, <laughs> this, than the negative one. Let me ask you this. If <laughs> I told you, awful, if I told you that you had 10 tests in your house, free, mm -hmm. government issued mm -hmm. free tests, would you take yeah. another one? Yeah, but not today. I mean, tomorrow. I All I'm saying is this. At $11 a test, yeah, I want to conserve the ones that I have. I got right. four from the government. I'm down to three. I don't need to be going to Target to buy an $11 test. So I'm happy with my negative and I'm going to mm -hmm. just go with, I took a test, I'm negative. Right. So now that I think we have to, I don't know, like I think we test every day to see if we ever just get negative, right? So I could leave my house again. How does it work? I don't, I don't know. even know. I've never tested positive for, for COVID. I've had all four variants, but I've <laughs> never tested positive for COVID before. Wow. I can't stop. My nose won't stop running. I dodged that thing for three years. Positive tests. Caught well, up to me. Well, you had it. You just didn't have positive tests. Right. Correct. But I feel fine. Yeah. I'm here. But like a total badass. Iron Man. But like, right. Like a total badass. Rather than letting us give you the business. Come on, man. For real. Like you can't do the show today from home. Mm -hmm. You're like, no, mm -hmm. I'll stick it to you two guys. I'll do it with COVID. <laughs> it's actually... um. It's actually quite distracting from how I feel because, you know, 10 minutes before we started doing this, I was laying in bed because my back was killing me. So it's nice and distracting to be on here. I actually woke up this morning and my headache was gone and still had a little sniffle and still have a little cough, but felt so much better and decided, you know what, rather than go to the gym where I wanted to work out because I don't want to cough on anybody or, you know, give a cold to anybody. Or maybe that's where I got whatever I've got. I decided to jump on the Peloton this morning. And mm -hmm. I did a really, really hard workout with some, I don't know, some kind of like German black guy. He didn't speak any English. Everything was in German, you know, uh -huh. <laughs> other than let's go. It was the only thing he said in English is let's go. So I didn't understand okay. a word my man said. I just followed his numbers all morning long. And I was like, I'm going to put in like an extra hard effort, like 20% more than I would normally do. So. No headache, little cough, definitely sniffles, but feeling much, much better. Browner, what do you make of all this? I think you guys are really ignoring what is actually more suspicious that's going around. And it happened last night. You may not have experienced up where you live, but here, everything was shaking because planes were flying overhead. And I don't mean like kind of shaking, like, oh, that's a helicopter. Like, no, that's military activity. Military activity that happens in the end of the world type movies. So, yeah, that, my friend, that is more on the agenda for me today. I need to crowd surf to see what's going on out there. If you live anywhere in the San Diego area, you, your home was shaking because of the, the air traffic last night. Let me know because I went outside and I thought I saw a UFO, but it wasn't a UFO. It was a line of planes. And I was really? like, uh-oh, here we go. And I'm yeah. watching The Last of Us. And there's a scene in The Last of Us. Where everything is like going. Mm, no spoilers. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Last of Us. Wait, I don't even There's know what The Last of Us is. What are we doing? What do you mean? What are we it's, doing? It's, I don't know the series. It's a, it's a television show on HBO. It's, Come on, it's, you know how I watch TV. You know I don't go. You know I don't go week to week. It's listen, listen. I'm going to tell y'all something about The Last of Us. If you haven't watched the second of it, if you didn't plan on watching, it, if you plan on watching it, for those who don't know, The Last of Us was a critically acclaimed, extremely bomb video game that they have now made into a move uh, into a television series on HBO. Mm -hmm. It is, quite frankly, the first three episodes. Full of white people. No. That's yes. why I'm in on it. No, it's not. There, see, if you watch it, if you watch it. Not just the red zone, will... Alex. Right, I right. Mean, no, I mean, that's what I'm telling. Listen, when you go don't, to the IMDb page and you watch trailers, it's bright. Don't, don't red zone. It's or bright. Don't, 
don't red right. zone don't red zone the last of us okay don't red well that's zone what you do to us. all the shows we tell you about because there are no listen and and am i ever wrong no no so I'm is there a you, main character is there a main character that is not white on that show yes a main character yes because i see one on a cast of 12 so do far. you do you as want as me one. to do you thank you do you want me to that's what we tell you it. all the time do you want me to spoil it for you, yes or no? No. No. Okay. Well, I'm going to watch it. Wait, but you, you know only watched watch the it. first three episodes? I'm, there's only three. There's only three. Oh, this how long might is each be, episode? Uh, the last one was an uh, hour and 12 minutes. Okay. And the other two, I think the first one was 56, and then the other one was 52. Okay, got it. Go ahead. The first three episodes of this show, the last one will win awards. Mm -hmm. Whenever it gets put up for awards, it will win awards. It's one of the greatest hour and 12 minutes I've ever seen on TV, and I'm not really even into that stuff. And do you know the video game before you watch the series or not? You don't need to know it, no. Because okay, I've never heard of it. W one no, more time, you, what's the series called? The Last of Us. The Last of Us, I'm going to write it down. Go ahead. So the first three episodes are fantastic. They're absolutely fantastic. You, you're going to be a little bit in the dark if you haven't played the video game, but you don't need to have played the video game. Playing the video game just makes some of the scenes that they roll up on and you go, oh, that was in the game. Oh, that was in the game. And so like, there's parts of it that really, as the person who played the game, mm -hmm. make it make the show extra good. But the acting, the writing, and the, the, just the, the direct, everything in this is great, man. It's absolutely great. Okay. So I, I hadn't heard of The Last of Us. The, the next thing I, was, I had on my calendar to watch was You People with Eddie Murphy and Jonah Hill, where the black family and the Jewish family- I haven't watched I haven't watched it yet. <clears throat> me neither. And it, and let me tell you something. I, I haven't seen it yet. I've only watched a trailer. But the, it it, it kind of hits close to home, you know, because uh, my daughter has dated a black dude. And <laughs> and I've thought to myself all along, geez, I wonder what happens <laughs> if she decides to get married to a black guy. And it's not just what does it mean for us? I thought of it. What does it mean to them that 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 their boy would be marrying a white girl? who's Jewish. And so the storyline without even having seen it yet is like, you know, something that could happen in my real life, you know? So I'm kind of excited to see it. And I was going to watch it last night after the Laker game, but then I realized I don't have two hours in me. And then I went to go watch the San Diego state basketball game. And it wasn't even on because whatever game was on before them on CBS sports network had gone to overtime. And I was watching the bottom line on CBS sports. Network, and they were telling me the score of the San Diego state Nevada game. But I wasn't able to see it because whatever crappy game was on was in overtime. So by the time when they got to the San Diego State game and I got to halftime, I was like, you know what? I'm not making it to the second half. And I passed out. So I haven't seen The Last of Us. I haven't seen you people. And I just finished White Lotus, which I'm still. The third what? episode, the third episode, if you watch it with a woman, mm -hmm. she will cry. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh... Uh, Listen, you might cry. Mm, you might cry. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, Scott's probably, Scott, you will cry on the third episode. Well, you know, I'm an emotional guy. Yeah, you got a lot of emotion wrapped up in I you. I mean, I started yeah. crying. Somebody sent me um, a message on Twitter, and I forgot to even watch it. But I guess SNL this weekend did a spoof of White Lotus called Black Lotus. Oh, that's hilarious. And I was like, oh, they must be listening to the show. Yeah. They must I be listening saw the to the Yeah, show. the hotel thing. I yeah, saw that was, on the... Uh, I didn't, you know. I got to see it. I got to go idea. see. I got to go see the Black Lotus uh, on on SNL. That's very funny. So look, mm -hmm. you, you say that I'm an emotional guy and that I might cry. Listen, I was getting emotional this morning on Tom Brady. Me too. I I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. It caught me when you could when he first said he was thanking the people. You could hear it getting ready to come out. Like he was physically getting teary eyed, and I was like, "Oh damn, Tom, don't do it, dog. Don't do it. Don't do it." And then it went away. <laughs> you imagine though. Like what it there's must too be much like. going on though. What what do you mean there's too much going on? Hmm? There's too much going on for me to believe that this is an official retirement. Nah, this is it, man. That video, that video felt real, man. It wasn't like that long letter he wrote. His like, movie's video. coming out this weekend. I don't know. It's man. gonna it's gonna bomb. Know. No, it's not gonna bomb. Right. It's not gonna bomb. Yes, it is. Oh, no, it's it'll not. bomb. No, it's not. It'll bomb. No, why do you I, say how that? many people you go? How many people you take into it? Well, I'm probably not going to make it this weekend, but it's definitely something that when I go to the movie theater, and I've gone, I told you, like two times in the last few weeks, 
every time they went through the previews in the beginning of the movies, which now lasts like 30 minutes, um, of all the movies that they showed us, I'm like, the Tom Brady movie is the only one I'm even interested in. Like, everything else looks like garbage to me. No, that's just uh, the fact that he did it on the same day that he, he retired last year. The fact that it was just a video of him on a beach. The fact that he's doing a podcast yesterday. You know, I forget who he was interviewing. And, like, he's been just on Jimmy Kimmel. He's been promoting his movie. And I'm like, I, I, I'm just not. Until, I would even say, until week one comes and he's not on a team, I will not believe he's retired. <laughs> he's too good. He's too good and still has too much in him. And there's too many teams that need him that I think he's retired. And if he if he would have not, I mean, obviously, if he would have unretired last year, what I mean is if he didn't do that whole thing last week, last year with the five-week retirement, I would have maybe believed this one. But I, this is just, there's no way he goes out with a, him sitting on a beach going like, all right, thanks, everybody. Bye. See, on the other hand, I looked at it differently. Like, you know totally what? Disagree. Rather than having a press conference. Yeah, this is just more authentic and genuine. But I like where you're coming yeah. from, Alex. I love how skeptical you are, like and retired. how cynical you are. Who's he working for? Fox. Oh, what's happening in the next two weeks at Fox? Oh, the Super Bowl. Yeah. yeah. Mm, okay. When he pops up on the TV on Fox, well, not buying it. Now that's interesting. Oh, he is. Oh no, he is good. He battered it. Would they possibly put him in the booth just for a little no. bit during? No. The all right, no, no, it's too big. All right, hold but on, everybody. There. All right, just everybody chill. We're just getting rolling. We're in the Seven Mile Casino Studio. We're here today with COVID, without COVID. We're on the air. We're in the Seven Mile Casino Studios. We'll dive deeper into the Tom Brady story next. Hey, great friends. What's up? It's Kaplan and crew Wednesday afternoon coming to you from the seven mile casino studio, seven mile casino.com. And, um, is it me? Am I alone in this? Yes. Are you sure? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm freezing, man. Oh no, I'm cold. Too. I am bitter freezing cold. And I was talking to a buddy of mine yesterday in Pittsburgh, 22 degrees. He's telling me how cold it is. My daughter's up in Boise. She's like, Oh my God, it's so damn cold. I'm scheduled to go to New York this weekend on a business trip. It seems freezing cold there, and I'm worried about, you know, travel and things getting canceled. I just can't deal with cold weather. I mean, it's getting to a point now where San Diego just may be too cold for me. I'm like looking around, going, where could I go to warm up to thaw out the desert? Go back Psych home, man. It's cold there at night. I'll go back home, Florida. Yep. Yeah, have you guys seen what it costs to travel nowadays? No, I, I haven't, mean, it, actually. It is cray-cray what it costs to travel. You know, how, you dude, know? have you seen how much eggs cost? No, interestingly <laughs> enough, because I haven't been in a grocery store in a couple right. of weeks me... and because my daughter does all the grocery shopping. But mm -hmm. funny enough, we always have eggs. Like, eggs are like a, a staple in right. our refrigerator. I'm here. We don't have any. I was, yeah. I was just about to say, hey, eggs, whoever the egg man is, bro, you pricing yourself out. You about to realize you are not that important. You are not as important as you think you are, sir. For the amount of money that y'all want for these eggs, keep them. Keep them chickens. Yeah, man. I'm Listen, I, I, my wife saw a TikTok, and now it's I can't just go to Vons and get, like, the Safeway white eggs. Like, I don't care. You know, oh, no. to me, an egg is an egg. Right. Uh uh. She's like, we need pasture raised, like organic. Bro, I'm out here paying like nine dollars for twelve eggs, dude. What? Yes. Bro, just switch the just switch the cartons. She won't know. No, she won't. She won't know. That's a lot of work, you know. It's a lot of work. You know what, like, I, dude? You know what I used I was to thinking? go to used to go to the grocery store and like walk out with bags and bags and bags of groceries for like a hundred bucks. Right now, yeah. dude, I, I could fit a hundred bucks in one bag, no problem. Dude, no there's problem. A, my, my my favorite little taco shop around the corner. Uh, my daughter went there the other day. She got two tacos. I want to say it was like $13 for two tacos. I have issues with what the taco industry in San Diego has done to taco pricing. I have big issues. Yeah. I'm a guy that grew up. I'm a guy that grew up going to TJ here. My, my, my first years in San Diego, I would go to TJ for lunch. You know, mm -hmm. I'd go to, I'd skip class, go to TJ, knock out three tacos for a dollar. There's these taco places around in my neighborhood. Where these these dudes, they're out here charging five dollars for one carne asada taco, and I'm like, what is going? Like, 
okay, I get it. Meat's expensive, but five dollars for one carne salad taco, one one taco, five dollars. I have issues with that, Scott. I got big issues really, with that. I really, really like More the way the you turned prices. on. I, I, but I love the way you turned on the uh, the Mexicano. Yeah. See, yeah. It's yeah. Wing. there's a there's a little taco shop up um, that I've never been to before. And the reason I'd never been in it is because outside it says a, um, it doesn't say super mercado. It says, um, oh God, there's another word they use and it just completely left my head. Carniceria? No, it's, it's more like, um, I don't know. Gosh, forget it. I, it was like grosseria or something like that. And I was like, okay, well, it must be like a Mexican grocery store or something mm -hmm. like that. And I walked in the other day, just, I'm like, I got to see what's going on in here. And it's a full on taco shop. That's all. That's all it is. I'm like. You guys got this sign out there that uses a word that crackers like myself who live in this neighborhood do not know what that means. Yeah. So I think you are a grocery store with Mexican products and you guys are telling me you're just a taco shop. So I was in there and I'm like, you know what, while I'm in here, let me get some. So I haven't had eggs in a long time because I, I, again, A, I don't haven't gone to the grocery store in a long time. And my daughter goes to the grocery store and she buys all the food. And I don't know if she looked at the eggs and said they're too much. Or maybe the store didn't have any. I'm not really sure. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to get a chorizo and egg avocado burrito. Breakfast burrito. Mm -hmm. And it was fire. No AF. potatoes? No potatoes. I, I, I don't do the extra carbs. You know, the, the, the tortillas well, yeah, I mean, enough. Yeah, you scoop the bread. Right. You know me. Yeah. And so, um, so I got this amazing burrito. It was fire. AF. Love chorizo. But it was like the first eggs I've had in a long time. And I was surprised the burrito was like, I don't know, nine or 10 bucks. You got real chorizo. See. Si. Oh. See. Si. As so opposed like, to what? Was it soy riso? No, I don't do that. So like the bottom of your burrito was just dripping no, in just oil? just dripping. Yeah. Just dripping. Yeah. So yeah. fire. Uh, this might be a cardinal sin as a Mexican, but I don't buy chorizo. It's just, it's messy cooking it. It's oily everywhere. It my hands if i put in a burrito my hands look like i'm like bleeding you know it's just <laughs> i have switched to soy riso and honestly they, yeah there's a difference but it's not like that big of a difference to me and i know i just insulted a lot of people but i just can't with the, all that oil and, and the mess it's the mess it's the yeah. mess dude it's, it's, it, i have a white top stove kind of thing it's just a mess man yeah it's yeah. pretty rare to get chorizo but i will tell you this just to your point about soy riso i uh, my daughter who is like mostly vegetarian she buys these Beyond Burgers, you know, mm -hmm. and she'll make them in tacos. So it's not, you know, like if we had taco night, I like to use turkey meat. Mm -hmm. She likes to use Beyond Burgers. Well, one night she made these Beyond Burgers as taco meat and it looked just like regular meat. So mm -hmm. I tried it. Fire. Interesting. Yeah. Now, a lot of people are giving me grief about it. They're like, dude, it's all chemicals. And, it's, and I'm like, I got it. I mean, I do. I really do. Um, which is why I never was interested in it in the first place. But my daughter likes it, and it's it's fire. So how do we get started on this? Eggs, egg cold. prices. Uh, egg. Cold, traveling freezing. to Florida. Yeah, freezing. Expensive right. travel, expensive eggs, expensive tacos, yeah. right? chorizo burritos, soy riso, impossible burger tacos, white people taco night. There you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, all right, let's, uh, let's get to Tom Brady, because that is the story of the day. We're in the Seven Mile Casino Studios, sevenmilecasino.com. Um, I mentioned this earlier, uh, for those of you that watch the pre-roll of the podcast, those of you that are listening on radio, you wouldn't have seen this or heard this TV viewers as well. Um, Browner, don't say anything if you don't mind, but we're working on something now to, cause people have been asking me, when are we going back to seven mile casino? We had that great dinner last year at seven mile casino. When Alex designed the menu, we had like, I don't know, 50, 60, 70 people all come to dinner. It was so much fun. And then we got done with dinner and then at Sammy's restaurant and bar. And then we went over and we all played cards together. So we're working on an event in March at seven mile casino, but I don't want to say what it is because I think people will be super hyped on yes, it's dinner, but there's also a show. And I want to, I want to save that. Browner, you know what I'm talking about. What do you think? I think that we are going to give the listeners of the show something very, very special and something very, very fun that they will remember. Yep. I agree. I do. All right. Let me do this. Let me jump right into Tom Brady because that news broke early this morning. As a matter of fact, um, about six o'clock this morning, I hear my phone buzzing and I can, I, my eyes are closed, but I can see that my phone is lighting up. I go to grab my phone and 
it's the first story. ESPN had put it out and whatever other news services I follow, news and sports, tons of push notifications. Yes, yes, I allow for push notifications. Most of you don't. I do. My phone is constantly all day long buzzing with push notifications. Tom Brady retires. Now, he put out a video all over social media. And to me, it's just my own opinion. I actually think he's really done. I mean, literally yesterday, I said on air, <laughs> I expect him to play two more years. We all had this conversation about, should he go to San Francisco? Can he collaborate with Kyle Shanahan? Would he walk through the door and say, it's my team, do what I tell you? Could he go to Vegas? Could he go home? Could he go home to New England? Could, could the Patriots organization go, you know what? He plays three more years after he left us. He's won a Super Bowl. We haven't. Let's bring him home. Could Mac Jones learn from Brady? Could Mac Jones go from being starter to backup? We had this whole conversation yesterday. <laughs> and then this morning, Brady says he's officially retired. Like, really, this time. Like, hey, hey, I'm retired. Like, really. But Alex, I like your cynicism. You don't, you don't buy it. Um, no, I, 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 I don't. Um, it's just, I got to get the video. I don't know where it went, but I gotta get it. <laughs> um, it's just one of those things that there's just so much going on around Brady right now that, and then also the same day he retired last year and you guys know me, I'm always a skeptic. I'm always just like, I'm just a skeptic. I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I just feel like there is, he's just so good still. And his personal life, and I don't want to sound like a dick, kind of seemed to just like blow up in his face last year. So it's like, mm -hmm. it's almost like he lost that aspect. I'm, I don't know I'm not, if that's true or not, but it just like, I just think there's so much left in the tank and there's real contenders that could use him. He's already got the next part lined up. It just feels out of nowhere again. I just don't, I'm not convinced and I won't be convinced until week one. Yeah, I know. What I'm if somebody not. gets like a the, another San Francisco? Like, you go, imagine go the Niners though. go through all their stuff. Yeah, like, go, again, go through your your uh, your skepticism though. You had a bunch of reasons why you're not a hundred percent buying it, and some of them might be actually convincing to people who are listening and watching. Well, um, number one, he retired in 2022 on February 1st. Today is February 1st. Last year, he wrote a very very long, like was it letter i guess that thanked basically everybody in the world this year he retires again february 1st in a 55 second video where he just is on a beach like that's it and that's number one his movie's coming out so it could use some promotion because i think it's going to stink it's not he's been on jimmy kimmel he's doing a he's like sitting down doing an interview on his own pod. Like there is so much stuff happening around Brady that this just feels to me like a promotional of some sort. Like, let's get my name back out there. Let's like get, it's not about me playing. It's about me doing everything else. Like he just interviewed Stephen A. Smith yesterday on his podcast. Wait, he interviewed Stephen A or Stephen yeah. A interviewed him on no. his podcast. Jim Gray and Tom Brady interviewed Stephen A. Smith. That's who it was. The, and I just looked it up. All right, and gotcha. I don't know. It just for me, it just seems like there's a lot happening and a lot of things he wants to promote and him throwing out his retirement talk. It just all seems like good timing. Hey, by the way, you guys both think that this movie is going to bomb. I told you that the last two times I was in a movie theater, I saw the Fablemans, which I thought was horrible. And I saw uh, what was it called? Life of Otto or something of Otto, something with Tom Hanks. And I thought uh, that was a little bit better, although my girlfriend cried the entire film mm -hmm. of every preview that i saw in the theater over the last two times i was in it every other movie looked like trash to me and the one movie that if you would have said to me what movie would you like to see of all those movies that they just previewed it would be the tom brady movie and i think you guys underestimate how many people love tom brady and then you combine all these older lady actresses who are all ultra, ultra famous and successful, you put them together with Brady and whoever else is from the team that's in the movie. I, I see there's one with Gronk. I see um, Guy Fieri, which I thought was the worst part of the uh, preview. At the very end, he goes, I'm Guy Fieri. I was like, 
Okay, what does that have to do with anything? So, and I like Guy Fieri. Um, but I think you guys underestimate how many people love Tom Brady, love these old ladies. <laughs> and because and how, of what you're saying, yeah, it goes to my point. Like, yeah. damn, Brady's no all these New Englanders that maybe the last three years were like, God, I can't Tom Brady with the Bucks, like I'm over it. We are Mac Jones is terrible, Jared Stidham, blah, blah, blah. How do you get all those guys in the theater? Oh, Brady retired. We should go support his movie. Oh, please. Got to support his movie. I just think, Browner, you're laughing. You just at me. said, you literally just said how many people love Tom Brady. That's literally right. going to, like, that's supporting right. his movie. Like, that's all I'm saying. And it's just perfect timing. Like, let's retire today. The movie comes out on Friday. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if it's about support, but I'll tell you this, Browner, as much as you think it's terrible and you won't go see it, I'll tell you this right now, buddy. White America is going to eat this for lunch. It's got a Metacritic score of 49%. Is that good <laughs> or bad? Is it out of 50? It's out of 100. Oh, really? Yeah. So what? Just because it's going to be a bad and movie. Plus, it's not like Tom Brady's it. like starring in it. He's in it, but it's about those four ladies. Yeah. It's not, a, it's not like a Tom Brady road trip movie. Dude, so you think, okay, so let me get this straight. Because yeah. I, I think you don't understand the power of how movies work now. Yeah, maybe I don't. Go ahead, okay. teach me. Av Avatar has been number one for five, going to be six weeks after this. Mm -hmm. This movie is based on four women in their 60s? No, 80s. 80s. Okay, even better. Four women in their 80s who the viewing demographic who goes to see movies now during the at night when they actually make movies or make money will be asleep. <laughs> like yes this movie's gonna do well from from noon to to 3 p.m let's go for a matinee darling after that kaput all right i know kids going to see Browner. this movie this is how but you establish if it bombs or not what was their budget and how much does it make okay james cameron had to make two billion dollars to make any sort of profit on avatar 2 he did okay. that it's like almost three i think the budget for 80 for brady $28 million. Okay. They're you think this movie that. is going to make $28 million in the box office? In the, in the box office. 28. You don't think so? That's the, that's what they call a loss in the business, my friend. Yeah, but 28 million sounds like such a small number. That's my whole point. Right. That's so what I'm, what I'm saying is, though, that if it makes $56 million, it doubled what it costs to make it. That's it's success. Gonna make, it's not going to make that. That's what I'm saying. It's going to make I, that. I, and it comes out Monday or it comes out Friday. Yep. I can't wait to see what happens on Monday. And, and and movies are more expensive than they've ever been. And this won't make it to 28 million. And that's not you, hard. That's not what hard. What do you think, Alex? What do you think? <laughs> it ain't making it 28 million in weekend one. I mean, if it's out and, if, and, if it's out there for two months, maybe, but it ain't doing it weekend one. The, the, if you hit hard weekend one. At a movie like this, you'll get 30, 40 million. And then the next week will be like 15. And the next week will be like five. This is going to do about 12 the first week. And it's not going to go higher than it will in the first week. It, that's just not, not how movies work. All right. Well, let me just say this. I don't know anything about the movie industry. Okay. I don't pretend to be an expert. And very frankly, I've gone to the two movies in the last three or four weeks, um, which is like the first time I've been to the movies in years. I think I went to see Top Gun. Like, that was probably the first time I'd seen a movie in, in a theater in years. Mm -hmm. You know, I watched that movie Elvis on HBO Max at home. I mean, it's not it's not a movie that you go to a theater and see. Now, if um, it was streaming, it might do some good numbers. Because you're just home. You might as okay. well throw it on. All right. I'm going to tell you guys this. I think that this movie coming out the week before the Super Bowl. The when there is tires. Not long after he retires, he retires on Wednesday. Movie comes out on Friday. I think this movie easily eclipses twenty eight million in the first weekend. Let me let me, let me see what movies are opening this weekend. Yeah, how we go? Up. How we go from talking about Brady retiring to his movie? Oh, know. it's because he retired two days before his movie came out because it's working exactly to plan. <laughs> <laughs> do you have the video available to show yes. everybody it's a 50 second video yes many of you likely have seen it on social media for those of you that haven't seen it or heard it no here's... knock at the cabin okay. comes out this week he is not okay getting wait, bro wait, wait, no here's this here's this cabin. real quick real quick real quick real quick before we do knock at the cabin 
the best performing comedy movies in 2022. Yeah. Guess how many made more than $28 million? Of all Tell the me. comedies in 2022, okay. how, mm. ma- how many comedies, because that's mm. the other thing, this is a comedy, how mm. many comedies made more than $28 million? How many? Just take a guess. Five. Four. Five. Five. See, I know, I know the movie industry. I know this industry well. Five Bronner. comedies. Five, Bronner. Five. Top of my head. I just know this stuff. And you think oh, Tom Brady's <laughs> 80 for Brady is going to be one of the five of 2023? What, which movie, what five movies uh, were comedies in 2022 that made more than 28 million? And this is on the year, not mm-hmm. in the weekend. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bob, the Bob's Burgers movie. Never heard 30, of it. 32 million. It was a car- that was a cartoon. Mm-hmm. Violent Night. Never heard of it. 47.5. Oh, Violent Night is like that Santa movie where Santa's a yeah. bad guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dog. I don't even know what that is. Oh, that's okay. Channing Tatum. That mm-hmm. made 61 million. Okay. The Bad Guys. Great movie. The Bad Guys made Bad Guys was animated. Good. Animated made 98 million. Mm-hmm. That was and good. the Minions made 370 million. Okay. The Minions be raking it in. So <laughs> well. I just have this uh, feeling that Tom Brady and all of his fame. But look at the demographic these movies are aimed at. The number one was kids. Number two is kids. Dog was for, for women who love Channing Tatum. What was the fourth one? The Santa movie. Uh, like uh, young silent, people. Right. Silent Night, Young People. And the fifth yeah. one was what? It doesn't matter. What does it matter? The dem- it matter? It's not 80-year-olds. It's not the demographic <laughs> that this movie is aimed at. Like wh- I haven't seen a commercial for this movie. At all. Um, you, you seem to think that this movie is aimed at 80-year-old women because the four ladies in the movie are 80-year-old women. Who, I don't football, think players don't, f- football watchers don't know these people. Don't know these ladies? No, they don't. You're right. They know Tom Brady. Who's and not that's in why it. This movie, and that's why, yes, he is in it. Who's in the movie more? These, three, these four ladies are Tom Brady. I don't know. I haven't seen it yet. Why don't you see it and let us know? Man, I almost cursed on here. Man, I'm not going to see no. No, fam, I'm good. I'll pass. Really? What I'll if I told you Vince Wilfork was in it? Would you see it then? Nope. Really? Nope. I can't get that time back. What I've learned about movies is if I'm not personally invested in them, I can't get that time back. I ain't going to waste my time watching these four white ladies run around and see Tom Brady. I'll pass, bro. That's what all if one of them? People. What if one of them was black? Would you see it then? No. Oh, really? No. What if all four of them were black? No. The premise of the movie is stupid. I don't Tom think Tom so. Brady uh, spent two days. He's got a small role. On this movie. All right. Hold on, everybody. Let's do this. This guy's going to be so mad when he sees that movie. Tom Brady's not in it. <laughs> Let, let's do this. <laughs> let's come back and let's let's hear what Brady said earlier yes. today when he retired via social media. We'll get right there. We're in the Seven Mile Casino Studios. This is Kaplan and crew on a Wednesday afternoon. Hey, great friends. What's happening today is Wednesday. It is February 1st. This is Kaplan and crew from the Seven Mile Casino Studios, sevenmilecasino.com. To all of our 1090 listeners, wherever you may be in Southern California on radio, glad you guys are here. For all of our YouTube viewers, get involved in that YouTube chat. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and uh, be involved in the conversation as the show goes along. To all of our podcast listeners, you're doing this on your own time. You're catching up. Shout out to you guys. And tonight, 7 p.m., we're on Channel 4 San Diego, which has affiliates in Orange County, L.A., and Santa Barbara. So we're everywhere, right? So easy to find. Very, very easy to find. All right, guys, let's keep going. The Tom Brady thing, we keep getting off track. (laughs) (laughs) No surprise. Yeah. So... Let, let's get into Brady's actual retirement announcement, and then we can have the discussion. Now, Browner and I both think Tom Brady's officially, really, finally done. And Alex here thinks that you're promoting a movie that comes out this Friday. Um, there are Same teams date as your him. retirement as last right. year. Right. Yeah. Last year was February 1st. I didn't know that. Yeah. This year it's February 1st. You're promoting a yep. movie. Yep. Uh, Super Bowl's on Fox. He's theoretically supposed to go work for Fox thereafter. Mm-hmm. So Alex here has taken over as show skeptic, which I don't like because I'm usually the most skeptical 
guy of the group. <laughs> and I don't like the fact that you're biting on my living. I don't know. I feel like you've been going along with what's in front of you, man. I think, uh, I think you, I, I have noticed that you have stopped being skeptical. Well, I mean, what am I naive all of a sudden? I mean, it, it, yeah. to, to believe, to believe that Tom Brady is really retiring 23 years in the NFL, seven time Super Bowl champion, five time Super Bowl MVP, and a guy who wanted to play till he was 45 years old. Check, mm -hmm. check, check, check. What's left now? What's left is there's teams that could use him, and he still is performing at the absolute highest of levels. Alex is putting up on the screen some of the numbers that you might need to know about Brady's career. Go for it, Alex. Seven time Super Bowl champ, five time Super Bowl MVP, three time league MVP, uh, the most regular season passing yards of all time the most regular season passing touchdowns of all time, the most playoff passing yards of all time, and the most playoff touchdowns, play, playoff passing touchdowns of all time. Yeah, those are the numbers you put up when you've played 23 years and you're in the playoffs literally every year. Mm -hmm. I mean, those are the numbers you put up. So, I, I mean, to me, I just look at the guy and I think this, you're 45, you got the rest of your life, you're ultra famous, you're ultra wealthy, and the next job that's waiting for you is actually going to pay you more than you were making as a player in the NFL. I felt like today when watching his video, there's a guy who is satisfied and has great years ahead of him. Let's, let's hear what Brady had to say. Yes. Good morning, guys. I'll get to the point right away. I'm retiring for good. I know the process uh, was a pretty big deal last time, so when I woke up this morning, I figured I'd just press record and let you guys know first, so I uh, won't be long-winded. Like you only get one super emotional retirement essay, and I used mine up last year, so I uh, really thank you guys so much to every single one of you for supporting me. My family, my friends, my teammates, my competitors, uh, I could go on forever. There's too many. Um, thank you guys for allowing me to live my absolute dream. I wouldn't change a thing. Love you all. That's a guy right there who's retired. <laughs> How do you suppose he uh, got on the beach? Looks, I can't tell where he's at. You know, could be in Tampa for all I know. Looks warm because uh, he's wearing a short sleeve. So Right. Could be in there. Miami, could mm -hmm. be in Fort Lauderdale. He's he's on the Florida coast somewhere because you can see all the high rise buildings right on the beach behind. If I'm keeping up with TMZ, I believe it's probably Miami because that's where Giselle moved with the children. Oh, and Brady's been with the children on TMZ. So, I wonder if um, I wonder how he was able to though, like just hey, I'm just gonna walk down to the beach, I'm just gonna record a little retirement video for everybody. How he's not getting and, bad like, bunnied? Yeah, like there's nobody. It's his own private beach, probably. I don't know, man. Probably. I mean, I don't know, because you see all those buildings behind him. They're so, all his one house. It's all the buildings <laughs> in his one house. <laughs> yeah. So I hear I him. I will say I this, hear... that that's very good acting. I'm down to go see his movie now. See that? Guy guy yep. knows how to almost cry, Browner. He's been taking acting mm -hmm. classes. Knows how to whimper. <laughs> <laughs> no, listen, Come man. On, and man. I, all, all honesty, that video to me is very authentic. That video to me does seem like a genuine goodbye. But this guy has already given us a genuine goodbye, and this guy has been authentic, and this guy is, I think he's addicted to the game, and that's my only reason. I, I think right now, yeah, he's retired. I genuinely think that. Do I think we'll see him in the NFL playing again? Yes. I just don't. I, I, he's done it. He, he did it. He unretired. He came back. The results weren't what he wanted. Sometimes, like, we, we don't think he's out of gas because he can still do it. But it's not that he's out of gas. It's what it takes for him to fill the tank up, that that's what he can't do. Like, he could probably play, play football for another two years, yeah. But getting to the point, the offseason work, everything you have to put in it, the personal sacrifices, he's already lost his marriage. His relationship with his kids appear to obviously be not awesome. How do you so, know? Because this is why he retired in the first place, to spend time with them. Didn't want to spend time with them. And then was like, uh-oh, I don't want to do this no more. I'm out of here. I mean, so, that's kind of just like, just an assumption. Well, yeah, obviously, I don't know. I don't know his kids. I don't know him. From my perception of what I see, 
that's what I think happened. He got to spend time with his kids. And he was like, wait a minute. They don't want to hang out with me. They're teenagers. I mean, I'm now at home by myself. My wife's gone somewhere. I'm going to go back and play football. And then he realized now this offseason, I'm divorced. I'm kind of on my own now. I can set the tempo different. I'm going to do this. So now he has full control over his life now. He got his day back. He gets his afternoons back. So now he can kind of write his own script. So now he'll be able to retire. That, that first retirement was with a family, with a wife. He didn't want that. He didn't want that retirement. So he went back. Now he got the retirement he wants. And so now he's going to live a better life. Because I think him. maybe if Scott, do you may, may you guys maybe think like all the reasons why I said it's a fake retirement is because of all the reasons it is a real retirement? Because he's got so much going on outside the football field now that he's just ready. He's got this yeah. podcast that it looks like he's investing into. He's got this probably a production company of some at some of some sort. He's got the Brady brand that he keeps pimping out on Twitter. Like he's got a whole bunch going on. Is those reasons why he is officially retired? Well, and also, I mean, look, he's going to work for Fox. At least, let me rephrase that. He has signed a contract to go to work for Fox. Fox finds themselves in a little bit of a weird spot <clears throat> just because Greg Olson, who's been the partner to Kevin Burkhart this year as their number one broadcast team, people really, really, really like that broadcast mm -hmm. team. And people seem to really like Greg Olson. And it's interesting how many times... Somebody can be like a Greg Olson or a Tony Romo, and they were good players. I mean, Greg Olson was a very good player. Tony Romo was a very good NFL starting quarterback. He's not going to the Hall of Fame. He's not one of the all-time greats. He doesn't have some playoff record to brag about. He's a very good starting NFL quarterback. Mm -hmm. Those guys seem to become really good analysts, whereas... The biggest stars of the game, and I'll just throw out a few names that I remember. Joe Montana, terrible on TV. Dan Marino, terrible on TV. Jim Kelly, terrible on TV. These are Hall of Famers. Drew Brees, people thought he was terrible on TV. Tony Romo, Greg Olson, people really like these guys on TV. Although Romo's catching a lot of heat because last week people thought he sucked. It's stale. It's getting stale. He's clearly not. He's not calling like he plays anymore. Did. Yeah, he, he's not preparing like he once did for these games. And now it just seems like he's going off of the reputation that he has built. And that's what he's doing the games with. Because that ew, it's getting worse. Well, I, I saw him call a bunch of plays this week that weren't right. Right. Correct. Exactly. I think that a lot of people said that as well. He was so close to the game that he still recognized plays as they were happening that first year that the further he goes away from it, he won't recognize the plays as crisply as he used to. Yeah, possibly. Yeah. So if yeah, I'm Tom Brady, know. if I'm Tom Brady, look, I'm 45 years old. Mm -hmm. I don't know that he's officially a billionaire like LeBron is, but he's probably pretty darn close. Would just be a guess. Although those of you that are listening right now are going, don't forget about his divorce. I got it. But when ultra, ultra wealthy people get divorced, they're like, hey, sorry about this. Didn't work out. You take this, I'll take this, let's go on with our lives. I'm sure Brady didn't get Brady ain't dealing with what I'm dealing with. Can okay. you feel me on that, Browner? Bill Gates uh, his net worth is 250 million, according to Celebrity Net Worth. Really? Bill, man, Bill Gates got divorced, lost half of his money. Jeff Bezos got divorced, lost half of his money, and both of them smiling happier than they've ever been. Yeah. It's different for them. <laughs> and yeah. plus well, Giselle Giselle, I think, has more money than him. She well, does. Giselle she does. had more money than Bill Gates' wife or Jeff Bezos' wife because Giselle had her own deal going Correct. on. Correct. Correct. So I'm I'm sure that Tom Brady is thinking to himself, I'm 45. My teammates are like, if I can hang out with somebody, 32, <laughs> you know, like, hey, they just drafted a new class. This kid's 21. You know, like I, I think I maybe have outgrown the locker room in some weird way. The guy and, could have thrown the pass to somebody who could have been his kid. Like, no doubt. What are, what are we doing? You know, it's like, I'm, I'm good. I've seen, I've won every, I've won the Super Bowl seven times. Mm -hmm. I've been to the Super Bowl 10 times. I'm a five time Super Bowl MVP. I'm going down in history as the greatest player in the history of the NFL based on rings. I know Browner, you want to argue all day long about Deion Sanders, but all I'm saying is, is that Tom Brady can feel 
Like he's done it all. Yeah. Yeah. He, and it's actually he, good he, timing too for Fox. Now that champagne's bouncing. Like, hey, so what are they going to do? Bump Olsen down to the number two team? Or are they going to bring Olsen into the studio? Put Brady into the, the one slot? You know, they lose champagne. They get Tom Brady. Sounds like an upgrade see, I, to me. I, I, I think that they're going to approach this from a totally different way with Tom Brady. Because it won't be like the Manning cast, but I also don't think they're just going to put him in a booth and have him call games like that. I, I think he can offer more than just, you know, a, a, a blander version of Tony Romo. Because that's what he'll be in there doing, seeing plays, calling plays before they happen. Like, he, he has to offer more than that. And I think that he can. The question is, who at Fox has the imagination and has the vision to create something that people would want to watch and hear that they will stick with throughout the length of that contract. Because I think he could do something that's all his own. Putting him in a booth with somebody just wouldn't do him justice, in my opinion. Well, I, I think that, um, this is just a guess, that he'll go into the booth in year one and he'll figure out if he likes it. And he'll figure out if he's good at it. And I'll say this, if he's not good at it, he ain't sticking around. You know, it's just that just not the way a guy like him is wired. You know, uh, I look a at a guy like Drew Brees. Deal. How long? A 10 year deal with Fox. OK, so but but again, if he doesn't think he's good and right. he doesn't like it, he's going to bounce. You know, I, I look at a guy like Drew Brees. OK, Drew Brees. Seven point five million dollars a year. I understand. But I'm going to guess that Tom Brady probably doesn't do things for money anymore because he's got generational cool. wealth. Be just yes. a guess. Yes. And I, Alex, hey, I get it. Who's walking away from $37.5 million? He's, I don't know what he made this to year work, playing for the Buccaneers. 17 weeks a year. Right. But, but it, it does require some work, and it will involve a lot of criticism. And when I look at a guy like Breeze, just as an example, you know, Drew – was he just wasn't great on TV. And and I would text him during like shows going, hey man, you're doing great. You know, you're <clears> looking good, blah, blah, blah. You're like I did with Landon during the World Cup. I would say to Landon Donovan, hey, you're doing great. And I think Landon's great on TV. But the critics just destroyed Drew. And NBC was like, we don't think Drew's ready to take over for Chris Collinsworth. And Drew's contract was, if I don't, I'm going to do a year in Notre Dame. I'm going to be ready to move over to Sunday night football with Tariko. And if I don't get that Sunday night football deal in a year, I'm free to walk. Drew knew he wasn't great at it. Drew probably, I'm guessing, wasn't loving it. And now Drew's retired. And listen, I, I mentioned to you guys, I ran into him at the Minnesota Vikings game a couple weeks ago where he brought his kids, his son and his son's six buddies. That's being a dad versus being an analyst and working. You know, um, I ran into Drew. This is a couple. This is like a week later at the Viore store in Carmel Valley. Mm -hmm. And he's like, yeah, you know what we're doing next? We're taking my kids uh, to another playoff game. And so he's being a dad and having a good time with it. He doesn't need the money that NBC was paying him. And he also doesn't need the criticism that goes with being a top analyst. If Tom Brady isn't good, by the way, I think he will be good. If Tom Brady isn't good, I don't see him sticking around. You know, it'd be funny. What if NBC swoops up Greg Olson? Because they don't have a replacement for Chris Collinsworth. And Greg Olson has been so good that NBC mm -hmm. can be like, hey, you deserve this amount of money. So come with us. Now we got Mike Tirico and Greg Olson. So, what you know, I think obviously it looks like Amazon's pretty set up. It looks like obviously ESPN set up but and CBS is set up. But NBC is not. Like right. the Greg Olson might the end up being a winner financially in all of this. Yeah, could be. Yeah, could be. Um, so Brady, because they're not keeping story. Olson in and not putting Brady in. You don't give someone that money and and don't put him in. It is. Oh no, no, no. And there's no way that Fox says, "Hey, Tom, listen, um, Greg Olson's really good. People seem to really like them. <laughs> right. You know. So here's what we're gonna do." We're going to take you, and I don't know who the number two guy is, the number two play-by-play -play guy is at Fox. I, I couldn't recall it off the top of my head. I, I don't remember who it is. Um, but it's not like Fox is going to say to Tom Brady, hey, look, what we're going to do is this. We're going to keep Kevin Burkhart and Greg Olson because people seem to really like them. We're going to move you, Tom Brady, Mr. Seven-time Super Bowl champion. We're going to move you to the number two team, kind of let you 
get your feet wet a little bit. That's not happening. Nothing against Daryl Johnston, but I could see him getting the boot for Greg Olson nope, as the number two guy. Who's the play by play guy? Joe of Davis. That Darryl, Joe Davis. Yeah, I could see them. I could see Fox saying, here's what we're going to do we're going to take Joe Davis and we're going to give him Greg Olson, and our number two team is going to be that much better. Mm-hmm. And we're going to take Burkhart and we're going to take Brady and we're going to put those guys in the booth together. Burkhart, yeah, by the way, I, I talked to Kevin. Um, this is uh, a couple weeks ago in Minneapolis, and we started chatting about this just a little bit before the game. And he's like, bro, I don't, I don't know, man. He's like, this has gone so well, me and Olsen this year. It's gone so well, and I feel so bad for Olsen because he's kind of the victim in all of this. But Olsen said today, I saw a quote from Olsen today. He's like, hey, I know what I signed up for. Yeah. I mean, I knew I was getting the number one spot, but you know what Greg Olsen's going to have? He's going to broadcast the freaking Super Bowl. That is like the dream if you are an NFL broadcaster. In year like two, right? Like full time year two, I think maybe three. I think so yeah, yeah. Because I remember him when he was a Carolina Panther. He got to call like it was the Panthers won a bye week, and he called a Vikings game, and the mm-hmm. Vikings didn't let him into the the right. team the production meetings because I they're remember. like, no, we got to play this guy in like three weeks. We're not going to let mm-hmm. him into the our facilities. Yeah, right. so I think full time he's maybe year two, maybe three. Yeah, and he's done he's great on the freaking Super Bowl. I know. And and one of the most anticipated Super Bowls in a long time. I know. All right, let me do this. Let me say that um, still to come, Alex mentioned um, the coaching moves yesterday briefly. We're going to get to that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Also, Ryan Lindley, the former San Diego State quarterback, who is now the current San Diego State offensive coordinator. First time we're having Ryan on since he's been promoted to offensive coordinator. We'll get there in just a matter of moments. Um, hey, Alex. Mm-hmm. Tell me about what's going on with iThrive because yesterday you were upping your dosage. How you doing? Yeah, um, I I feel besides COVID, that's the only thing that I feel right now. <laughs> uh, but everything's going well. You have like 34, 35 pounds. Um, I was wearing some shorts this morning and Margo's, those don't fit you anymore. She said they look super baggy. So, I mean, I guess it's like a noticeable change now. Tamar, yeah. who sees me every single day, which is no, crazy. There is a noticeable change because we looked at a picture from three years ago and then we looked at a picture from your wedding and just from your wedding in early November to where we are now, there's a noticeable difference. Hey, look, if you're trying to lose weight and you can't change your diet, you can't increase your exercise and you don't want to change your lifestyle, you need to go to iThrive. 858-240-1497. 858-240-1497 is the number for those listening. And um, if you want to just make it easier, just go to kaplanandcrew.com, kaplanandcrew.com. Click on iThrive. You'll learn all about the iThrive Lean program. And um, you should definitely check it out because people are finding it to be an incredibly successful way to lose weight. And it's all FDA approved. So if that matters to you, obviously. So check it out, kaplanandcrew.com, iThriveMD, 858-240-1497. Alex has lost almost 35 pounds. And you're saving $200 per month for the first three months. So $600 in savings over the first three months. Really good deal. All right, let's do this. Um, Coming up, Sean Payton is now the coach, I think, of the Denver Broncos. I say it like that because not the Chargers. Oh. I I told you all season long he's not becoming the coach of the Chargers. Oh, I just read our mentions. I thought he was going to the Chargers. The Chargers do not pay coaches like Sean Payton what he can get. And the Chargers don't give up control to coaches like Sean Payton who have the sort of experience that he has. They're more concerned with letting their kids run the team than having an experienced Super Bowl champion coach run their team. Sean Payton gets the job in Denver and Houston hires another black coach. So they should be applauded for what they're doing. And maybe this next new head coach can get the Houston Texans turned around because he was a former player there, one of their best players in the club's history. We'll get to these stories coming up. Plus, Ryan Lindley, we're in the Seven Mile Casino Studios. Stick around, everybody. All right, great friends. Hey, what's happening? It's Kaplan and Crew. This is Wednesday, February 1st, along with Grande and the Brown Man. We come to you from the Seven Mile Casino Studios, sevenmilecasino.com. We will have the highlight of the day upcoming. And then Ryan Lindley is going to join the show, the new offensive coordinator of the San Diego State Aztecs and a longtime great friend. We'll get to all of that on the way. Uh, Before we do, though, so we've been talking Tom Brady pretty much all afternoon, his retirement. Do you believe it? Do you not? 
Was it sincere? Uh, you know, is he promoting a movie? What happens to the Fox broadcast? I think we've been very Brady centric, but there were other big stories that happened yesterday in the NFL, which this is the NFL's time, right? The NFL right now kind of owns the sports world. I would say that next week, probably late in the week, if LeBron is going to break Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's all-time scoring record, that will become a very big story on Super Bowl week. But right now, the NFL has our attention. Yesterday, the Denver Broncos, according to the reports, signed a deal with Sean Payton. But the way I read it was they've agreed to hire Sean Payton and make a trade to the Saints. And at least based on the reports that I read, I thought to myself, is this a done deal or is it not a done deal? And so the Saints would get a first round pick this year from Denver, which, as I recall, was kind of a later pick, even though they didn't have a whole lot of success. Um, and, and the Saints would also receive the 2024 second round pick. So you're going to get a first rounder and a second rounder for a coach who doesn't even coach your team anymore. And the Broncos would get a third rounder the following year. So Sean Payton to Denver. This is an ownership group that is willing to pay whatever it takes. They are multi, multi billionaires. They took over the Broncos when Nathaniel Hackett was already hired as their head coach. They're the guys that got Russell Wilson and then gave him all this ridiculous money, which obviously we know he didn't play that well this year. Gentlemen, do you think that Sean Payton, out of football for a couple of years, and Russell Wilson, who moved teams a year ago and didn't really look very good, do you think this will become a successful partnership? What do you say? No. What are we doing? <laughs> Browner. No. We're just, we're just looking at Browner rolling no. his eyes. No. No, <laughs> man. Listen, I, th if the Walmart people didn't have so much money, bro, I would really go after them because they about to get jobbed. They about to get jobbed. Th Sean Payton. Sean Payton might have sold the greatest bill of goods that I may have seen in a very long time from a coaching perspective. This man is about to collect his check with a face mask on. This is about to be bad. This is about to be real bad, man. Russell Wilson isn't even the type of quarterback that he's been successful with. Like, so he's stuck with Russell Wilson. He's stuck with him. That defense is good. A short, a short quarterback that can't throw deep. The mobility... It's Russell Wilson's A-plus game. Drew Brees threw off timing. Mm -hmm. Drew Brees mm -hmm. threw on timing. So, okay, mm -hmm. so you're going to tell me that the throwing mm -hmm. ability of Drew Brees and the throwing ability of Russell Wilson are equal. They played two Thanks completely file. different games. They played two completely different games. And so if you're Sean Payton, you're now – the reason why Russell Wilson failed is because Sean Payton is going to ask him to play like Aaron Rodgers plays on timing. That's why he just failed at. That's literally why he just failed. And so Sean Payton's going to come in with his one Super Bowl. Russell Wilson's got that. And, and, and try to change how he plays the game. That's why Hackett failed. Wait, just and one more time. What, what do you wait? I just want to make sure I understand what you think. That mm -hmm. just, just describe it to me one more time. What Russell Wilson wants to be versus what Sean Payton would want him to be. Just, just. Break that down one more time. I want to make sure I'm clear on what you're trying to say. Because remember, no. rest in peace, John Clayton, who said famously years ago, Browner, you don't know anything <laughs> about quarterbacking in the NFL. God love the guy. Shout out oh, to Devin man. Hester. Hall of Fame. Uh, so, Sean Payne became successful with Drew Brees playing quarterback, the style of Drew Brees plays. Mm -hmm. Russell Wilson does not play that style of football. Russell Wilson is closer to playing uh, – Drew Brees is closer to playing like Aaron Rodgers. I add those two together because Nathaniel Hackett thought that they were going to be calling play for Aaron Rodgers, and he ended up with Russell Wilson, and he never changed his style. That's why Russell Wilson looks so bad. Sean Payton is going to come in with the same style of play or similar to Nathaniel Hackett's style of play. The way that he wants the offense to run, quarterback style, is getting rid of the ball in timing routes. That's not what Russell Wilson does. That's what he just did sucking this year. It's going to be the same team. All right. So the question was, will Sean Payton and Russell Wilson be a successful marriage of no. head coach and quarterback? Alex, what do you think? No. Uh, I've done a 180. 
I've done a 180, and I think that yes, I think that Sean because here is also a preface. This guy also thought uh, the Broncos would be good, so hear him out. Which is why I still think now that they have a competent coach, they will be better, and also they can't be much worse. <laughs> uh, you they average like 17 points a game. That's clearly going to change. They are way too talented. They just they had no coaching last year. Let's be real. Guy was over his head. He had too many responsibilities. He was calling plays. He was being head first time head coach. He wasn't ready. Have Sean, you Payton, Sean Payton at the end of his tenure with the Saints. Sean Payton's Wasn't offensive great. stats, points per game, rank second, yards per game first, third down conversion first, red zone conversion first. I mean, the guy knows offense. Like it's He's going to go in there and improve the offense. I, that is just a fact. There's no way he's not. There's no Unless Russell Wilson is completely shot and completely washed and is the worst cook in the kitchen, Like he's going to improve that offense. There's no way they're not going to. So um, when I think about Russell Wilson this past season, yeah, obviously it looked really bad. Mm -hmm. And you have a Super Bowl winning quarterback who just signed like a $250 million contract with like $160 or $180 million guaranteed. He knows his status in the franchise. Now you've got a rookie head coach who has no relationship of any kind with Russell Wilson. And it just seemed like it was destined to fail. And it only took 15 games for the new ownership of the Broncos to go, you know what? We didn't hire this guy. I think he's a little in over his head. Um, probably wasn't ready for prime time. And this relationship between quarterback and coach isn't working. I've been saying this for weeks. I'm going to stick with it. I think Sean Payton will come back into the NFL and will be no different than Mike McCarthy. If you go back and you look at when the Green Bay Packers won a Super Bowl, you had McCarthy as the head coach. You had a very young Aaron Rodgers. He was not as opinionated back then. He hadn't earned the opinion, if you will, back then. The two of them could coexist and partner together. And as you guys know, uh, a little bit of inside here, because my boy Van Pelt was the offensive, uh, he was the quarterback coach of the Packers. His job, literally, with the Packers was to deal with Aaron Rodgers because Rodgers at that point couldn't deal with McCarthy. Those two guys had a total personality battle. Um, Rodgers had lost trust in Mike McCarthy. There was an NFC Championship game in Seattle. I believe it was the second year that Seattle went to the Super Bowl. Remember, they went back-to-back, -back, the one where Russell Wilson mm -hmm. threw the interception at the end of the game? Um, that year... The Green Bay Packers played in the NFC Championship game in Seattle. I'm like 99% sure. Maybe it was the divisional round. Bottom line is they lost the game because McCarthy chose to kick two, like, 23-yard field goals in the game. When you're on the road in the playoffs against an explosive team, you just can't settle for field goals. Not that short. And, and Rodgers felt like you should have given me the ball and you should have given me a chance to score. Those two guys couldn't coexist any longer. In fact, I remember uh, the first year that Alex was working there, um, Rogers lived here in San Diego. And they sent Alex out here to just hang out with Aaron Rodgers. Like, go down there and create a relationship with him. And we, Me, Rogers, and Alex all went out to dinner. We hung out. We had a nice relationship. They were trying to get social. Aaron Rodgers was a different dude back then than he is today. That's probably 28-year-old Aaron Rodgers rather than 38-year-old Aaron Rodgers. So I think that Sean Payton is going to come back and be exactly like what Mike McCarthy is. Won a Super Bowl? Sure. How long ago? I mean, what year did the Saints win the Super Bowl? 2010? 11? Nine. Right? Something like that? 2009. Nine. It's 15 years almost since Sean Payton has won a Super Bowl. But teams get obsessed with, look at the success that he had. Yes, he did. But when Sean Payton got Drew Brees, do you guys remember what Drew Brees was? Drew Brees was an injured guy who was looking for a home, and there were two teams that were interested, Miami and New Orleans. Miami chose Dante Culpepper. New Orleans chose Drew Brees. Or Drew chose New Orleans because that's what, what was available. Drew took that meeting with the Saints and, and had that press conference and looked like a shell-shocked guy. Like, this is all I can get is the Saints job because the Saints were a laughing stock back then. Peyton was young, Breeze was young, and they were partners. 
They were friends. I've told the story. Me and Billy Ray were having dinner one night in Miami at a Super Bowl with Drew Brees and his marketing guy uh, who lives here in San Diego. And Sean Payton came and hung out, had dinner with us. They were friends. They were partners. They had a collaboration. They were, they were tied at the hip. And even though they only won one Super Bowl, Drew Brees and Sean Payton had one of those quarterback coach relationships. I don't believe... Well, Scott, yeah, let me I just, just don't believe that Sean Payton can do that with a veteran quarterback at this point of his career. Let me ask you a question. Go ahead. Besides Bill Belichick, mm -hmm. how many coaches have more than one Super Bowl in the last 23 years? Uh, I, my guess is probably none. Exactly. Tom Brady and Bill Belichick have, and I've said this so many times, they have, they have changed the perception of how easy it is to win a Super Bowl. Andy Reid ain't doing it. Hasn't done it. Like, ha hasn't done it. You know what I'm saying? Like, the, name the best coaches in the NFL right now. John Harbaugh, he's 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 got one. Pete Carroll, he's got one. Like, name the best coaches in the NFL. They only got one. Yeah, Kyle Shanahan, who a lot of people think is a great coach, he's got zero. Right. So go out, get a coach that is available. Yeah, you got to trade for him. Get a coach that is available. And automatically, you are you got a top five head coach in the NFL. Is Mike McCarthy a top five head coach in the NFL? No. Hell no. Then, then why is Sean Payton a top five coach in the Thank NFL? Thank you. Thank you. I mean, you. if you just look at his record with what he did in, in the last five years that he did in, in New Orleans, they were first place in the NFC South. They, they they were supposed to go to another Super Bowl, but the, the refs screwed them out against the Rams. Like, let, let's not revise history like the Saints weren't really no, no. freaking no, no, good they, under they were, Sean Payton. No, no, they were really good. And they were yeah. there every year. But right. they, but But just like Mike McCarthy with the Packers, or Andy Reid, they they haven't been. Or you, you just mentioned Pete Carroll, they mm -hmm. weren't able to do it over and over and over again. So why the Denver Broncos think that Sean Payton is going to walk through the door? They're going to pay him a fortune, and they're going to have great mm -hmm. expectations. I'm not rooting against Sean Payton. I just don't think it's going to work. I think a Super Bowl 13 they have, years ago is is not as impressive today. I think they have so much money that I'd rather take a chance with an established guy. No, that you know he knows what he's doing as opposed to let me go get Brandon Staley and give it a shot. Let me go get, you know, who have, Nathaniel Hackett again, give it a shot. Let me go get any name, any first time head coach and to see how many times it works. New York, they didn't, they, how many times they swing and miss Jacksonville. Let's, you know, like I'm saying, like, let's go out. We have the money. What's $85 million to us. We'll just open another Walmart. Boom. We got it back. <laughs> Like I just think that instead of we always bash the Chargers for being cheap and trying to get no name guys to be the next big thing, why not just go get the big thing? I completely hear what you're saying. Totally agree. If you can get an experienced head coach that has Super Bowl credentials that can walk through the door and have everybody sit up and listen and go, "Wow, we got to listen to this guy because he knows what he's doing." I mm -hmm. completely agree. Sean Payton. If you asked me last summer, if you asked me last summer who I want between Kevin O'Connell and Sean Payton, I'd probably say Sean Payton. Of course. Or or right. Sean Payton or Brandon Staley. Of course, Sean Payton. Right. Or Sean Payton or D'Amico Ryans or Sean Payton or Frank Reich or Sean Payton or any a name of most coaches. I'm going to say Sean Payton. We're talking you think, about. You think Browner would rather have night. some defensive coordinator from the Colts or Sean Payton for the Bears? The defensive coordinator. I don't want okay. Sean Payton. That's what I'm telling you. Okay. That's what you, you want to hear what you want to hear. So you do that. We're talking about blank slates. With what the Bears have, I would rather have the guy that they have than have Sean Payton. The, the Broncos aren't going in with a blank slate. They have no cap space. They have no draft picks. And the team that you have, that's what you got. That's right. what you so got. So let me get a guy that knows what he's doing. If you were going to. Instead tell, of a guy figuring it out. <laughs> if, the, if the Broncos had a top five pick, I would be far more on board with Sean Payton because he could get this kid and molds whomever the quarterback is going to be and what he wants to do. Russell Wilson is what he is. I agree with you, Browner. He is I agree. what he is. I agree. That, I don't I don't know that Russell Wilson is going to all of a sudden go, you know what? Gosh, they got me Sean Payton. So now I've had Pete Carroll, and now I've got Sean Payton, so I'm going to do everything Sean Payton says to do because I think Russell Wilson is going to be like, this is who I am, this is what I've been, this is what yeah. I've had success with. Russell Wilson going to tell you, I'm bigger than Sean Payton. I've been to more Super Bowls than he has. What he gonna tell me? I'm playing. He been watching on TV somewhere. Like what? Like come on, man. Y'all, you, you. Cause I'm gonna be specific. You are giving Sean Payton way too much credit.
No, I, I agree with I, I hear what Alex is saying though. I mean that that I mean he's got a crap ton of wins, he's got a crap ton of division titles, he's gone deep multiple super he's multiple times in the playoffs. Like I just don't know what more you want from a guy that to to bring into a like literally they have no flexibility, right, Browner? So I'm gonna bring in Correct. another Nathaniel Hackett and try and figure it out. Like let's give let's give another random dude the chance to figure it out, or let me know. Let me know, go get a guy that knows exactly what he's doing, that knows exactly what he wants, and he knows what he's going in, like what he's armed with. I'd much rather have that for the Broncos situation and, than trying to swing and miss again. Right, and have to put you a staff seen together. Him operate with a, have you? Well, the staff part, yes, he can do. I'm not knocking him on that. Have you seen him operate with a quarterback with the tools of Russell Wilson? No, you have yes, not. A short guy and, with that doesn't throw deep. Yes. All right. And cool. he just happens to have an extra okay. tool that he can run. I just wonder cool. though. All I right. just Good wonder if, if so. I just who's the better passer, doing... Russell Wilson or Drew Brees? Drew Brees. What are you doing? What are you doing? Wait, wait. You don't think Drew Brees is the better passer than no? Than... That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I just said Drew Brees. Russell Wilson had right. I'm agreeing with you. Russell Wilson okay. is nowhere near on the level passer as Drew Brees is, and that's what made him great in that offense. Russell Wilson is not a good passer. He's a good playmaker. Totally different things. Yeah, I don't think these two guys are going to get along, and and I think the Broncos are now going to be completely screwed into they can't get out of the Russell Wilson deal and they're not going to be getting out of the Sean Payton deal. So these two guys better learn to live together. And I wonder if if they can do it. I really do. You just listen, that's a different conversation because that's on Russell Wilson. I, I just think they went and got the best coach and I'm always down for that. All right, listen, um, stick around, everybody. Ryan Lindley, the San Diego State offensive coordinator is going to join us in a matter of moments. Before we get there, Grande, can we get to the highlight of the day, man? Sure. It's time for the highlight of the day, man. Do you want to get high, man? I'm just really high. Highlight of the day is brought to you by Turholistics. The new promo code for the month of February. Flowers23. Flowers23. Got to give them those flowers, February. Flowers23. Flowers. Spend 25 bucks at Touring California. Use that promo code and you're going to get 20% off. Flowers23. All right. Um, well, let's just, we haven't talked about it, so I'll make it the highlight of the day. The Texans hired a, their third black coach in a row. Mm -hmm. Congratulations to the Houston Texans. Uh, they should be, like you said, Scott applauded. They hired D'Amico Ryans. And listen, they're going to pay him for six years. How long is he going to be there? I don't know. But according to reports, he signed a six-year deal to be the next head coach of the Houston Texans. This is also a guy that dra that was drafted by the Houston Texans. Right. Played for them for about six years, I believe. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, sued them uh, for <laughs> tearing his knee up uh, on a playing field. That and I don't now recall. they're back. That I don't so, recall. So, hey. Yeah. Yeah, I don't remember that. I don't remember them su him suing them. I have no – not only do I not yeah. have recollection, I have no knowledge of it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know anything about yeah, it. Amico Ryan sued the Texans uh, because I think he tore his knee up on one of their uh, – where they're playing fields. Mm -hmm. And I think he ended up suing the maker of the grass or something. I, whatever. It doesn't matter. Like I'll just say, congratulations. This. Let me say this. <laughs> First of all, the Houston Texans should be applauded while everybody else talks about, you know, hiring practices in the NFL. You can just take a look, for example, at what Carolina recently did. You know, Carolina defended themselves by hire for hiring Frank Reich rather than, I don't recall who the other gentleman was that they were talking about. Does anybody Steve Wilkes, Steve Wilkes, Carolina defended themselves by saying the crew of people that we put together to analyze who should be our head coach, white guy, white guy, black woman, black woman, white guy. I mean, like they, they made it seem like, Hey, lots of cultural diversity in our organization. This is the decision our group came up with. We chose Frank Reich over Steve Wilkes. So the, the Houston Texans have been so bad for so long and they've, and they've continued to hire black head coaches, which again, they should be applauded for. The smartest thing they've done, in my opinion, is give this guy a six-year deal. Reason being is every player will know. This guy's supposed to be the coach for the next six years. Doesn't mean he will be, but he ain't getting fired after a year. He's not getting fired after two years. Maybe you get to year three, and maybe they finally decide, you know what, let's go in a different direction. But giving him a longer-term deal than is normal in the NFL, to me, is an attempt. Doesn't mean it's going to work an attempt at creating stability. Browner, you don't like this move. Listen, man, you must be smoking on that highlight of the day if you don't think they will fire this man after one year and just pay him for the other five. I, I don't, I don't mm -hmm. trust this organization one bit. Congratulations on Black History Month and this man getting paid as a black head coach in the NFL where that is not common. But this organization, 
this organization, I do not trust him. I, I think it's helpful that he has played for them. So he knows the owner. They're comfortable with him. So he may get a little more leeway than Lovey Smith did. Or the, the super old guy they hired who was the oldest head coach in the history of first-time hires ever when they hired him. I just I just don't like the way that they do business, whether it be Deshaun Watson. I don't like the way that they do business all around. But get that job, brother. Congratulations. Get in there. Do your thing. Hopefully he can turn that organization around. All right, let's do this. Ryan Lindley is coming up next. We're in the Seven Mile Casino Studios. Stick around, everybody. This is Kaplan and Crew. All right, great friends. Hey, it is Wednesday, February 1st. It's Kaplan and crew with Grande and the Brown Man. You know, we've been trying to track down Ryan Lindley because we love this guy and we love the story. I mean, here's a guy who played his high school ball in San Diego, played at San Diego State, chance to play in the NFL, has been working his way up the coaching ranks, got brought back to San Diego State last year and is now elevated to offensive coordinator. We got a lot to talk about. Here is new San Diego State offensive coordinator Ryan Lindley back on Kaplan and crew in the Seven Mile Casino Studios. Hey, coach, how are you? Appreciate it, man. I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for having me on. It's yeah, uh, man. it's been a lot going on, like you said. The past three, four months been a been a whirlwind for me and the family. But uh, super excited to be back home. I mean, this is this is in a lot of ways. You know, you make your five year, ten year plan. This is this is soon as possible and way down the line. You want to be back home when when you can. So when coach called, I was I was first thing out. Can you just take us, Ryan, through the chronology? Just, just I know it sounds like a lot. High school ball into San Diego State and everything that's kind of just all the little stops along the way to get you to where you are today. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, obviously came from Alpine. My parents are still up there. and El Capitan High School, I went there. You know, most my sister went to Granite Hills, and most guys are, most guys are Granite Steel all the way up there in the mountains. But uh, my dad was working at El Cap, so I went there. I thought I was a baseball player. I always joke, like, Whenever I'd see Tony Gwynn in the hallways here at San Diego State, like I was, I was a kid in a candy store, man. Like I, anytime he'd stop and talk, which he did often, man. I mean, he was, he was obviously everybody knows a legend. So, uh, you know, fast forwarding through that, got lucky enough to get a scholarship. Chuck Long offered me here and uh, and played for him for the first two years. Um, obviously, you know, things things weren't going the direction everybody intended it to. So that uh, as fortune would have it, got me with Coach Hoke. So. Had Coach Hoke for two years, played for him, um, and we were successful enough that, that he got the Michigan job uh, after my junior year. So right. Coach Long uh, had been the defensive coordinator. Obviously, we had a relationship, and I still vividly remember, you know, being a kid and, you know, it, you under you understood a little bit why Coach Long got let go. But when 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 Brady took off, it was kind of, you know, you're, you're in shock a little bit. Uh, and I remember Coach Long just kind of coming to me and saying, hey, listen, we're going we're gonna to keep things really the same, you know, steady the ship. We're going in the right direction. Let's keep it going. And obviously, you know, Rocky did that for, for 10 plus years here. So, um, you know, I, I, it's, it's really exciting to be back here, see how the programs evolved because that's college football. You gotta, you gotta evolve at the times, but, um, you know, getting me, getting me back here now, it's, it's been a blast. So I know I, I skipped my NFL career because no, no. I'm <laughs> 50 pounds past my playing weight. And I always tell our quarterbacks, they want to, they want to watch some clips and stuff of me doing it. And I go, guys, I would never recruit a guy as slow as me, okay? And I know I know I can spin it, but listen, I, I need you guys to all play a hell of a lot better than I ever did. So, you know, I, I skipped the playing days. I had a I had a I had a phenomenal opportunity. Uh, you know, lived in Arizona, played for the Cardinals. I have a ton of respect for for the coaches I played for there and that organization. And had my few cups of coffee, even even learned some French out in the eastern part of Canada, uh, and then jumped back into this coaching thing. So that got me back with Coach Long uh, as a GA. And uh, bounced around, got two opportunities with the Cleveland Browns for a year and a half plus, um, which which was uh, an experience in itself. Still, still looking back on that, ton to learn, ton I learned as a young coach. Um, and then really when I call it kind of like a sabbatical, you know, I I got into the analyst thing. Uh, COVID, I was with Andy Ludwig, a former offensive coordinator of mine. Learned a ton from him, from him as an analyst, as an assistant. Um, and then went down with Zach Garnett and thought about I was I was back on the dark side on the defensive side of the ball and. Uh, that's what brought me back here. So, um, like I said, coming back home was always a dream come true. It was always the end goal. And, uh, 
happy to happy to be back here getting getting things going in the right direction. Ryan Lindley is here. He's the offensive coordinator now with San Diego State. And you know, just talking about playing high school ball in San Diego and playing at San Diego State and being through um, you know, these coaching changes, um, you know, from Chuck Long to Brady Hoke to Rocky Long. And then wasn't there a spot in your career where you were like a private coach? Mm-hmm. And and didn't you even coach? I remember us talking about this back then. Didn't you coach Carson Wentz and Jared Goff, getting them ready for the NFL draft back then? I did. Yeah. So that was that was kind of my period. I had gotten let go for my second or third time, you know, in the NFL, and I kind of knew that was that was starting to you know trend downward. I'd had my opportunities and didn't necessarily flourish. Um, so kind of saw you know they figure out what the what the next move is after football playing that is so. Uh, you know, I'd always thought about coaching, wasn't sure I was fully committed to that at the time. Um, so those that draft training deal is really like a like a three month commitment, you know. So we recruited a little bit in December with the kids uh, as, as I worked with an agency. We recruited them, uh, you know, did the did the training process as a lot of guys are going through right now. Did that January to, to March, April. Um, and it really kind of let me know, like, OK, like now, now one thing I will say, first and foremost, those two cats were going to get drafted one and two, no matter who worked with them. You know, <laughs> you're only as good a coach as your players are. So I still keep in contact with those guys. And, and obviously, you know, they've had ups and downs in their career. It's, it's great to see Jared kind of on the upswing. I, I hope Carson gets back on track and, and finds a new place to be. But um, that, that really let me know, you know, I worked with Jared and Carson the first year, which you couldn't get any better than one and two at quarterback. Um, Mitch Trubisky the following year. And then my third year when I kind of knew I wanted to get into coaching, uh, worked with a guy by the name of Luke Falk out of Washington State. So uh, after that, I kind of knew, you know, I, I knocked on Rocky's door and really I was willing to volunteer and he had a GA job for me working on defense. So that's kind of the genesis of, of my coaching career. How'd you wind up getting to the Cleveland Browns? Because Kevin O'Connell, who's now obviously the coach of the Minnesota Vikings, his career also started. He was Johnny Manziel's quarterback coach mm-hmm. with the Cleveland Browns. What year were you there? Who was the quarterback and how'd you get that gig? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, even, even how I got there, um, you know, and, and I'll be honest with you, like looking up to Kevin, I mean, I played with him for one year here. I mean, he's he's always been such a role model to me. And when I got into it, I kind of looked at it as like, hey, you know, it's, it's worked out for him. Maybe this private coaching gig is a good stair step into into coaching in the NFL or in college. Um, but uh, really, for me, it was just relationships. I had played for Freddie Kitchens, who was my quarterback coach for the Arizona Cardinals for two years. Um, he was the running backs coach. Hugh Jackson and Todd Haley were let go. Todd Haley was the offensive coordinator. Freddie was elevated to coordinator and uh, really, as, as he put it, just needed a guy that he could trust to, to step into the running back room, you know, it's, and, and I told him same kind of thing when I started coaching DBs, it's like, Hey, like I am the last guy to tell anybody how to run a football. So uh, luckily, you know, the common theme here, good players make a good coach. I had Nick Chubb, uh, a guy named Duke Johnson, a number of really good players in that room that uh, I coached a lot more of pass protection and the, in the, in the, in the past schemes the run game, I kind of let their natural ability take over. So uh, I coached the running backs really for the first half year. When Freddie Kitchens was elevated, we had some success. He was elevated to head coach, and I got moved in the quarterback room where obviously I was a little bit more comfortable. So I uh, was there with Baker Mayfield uh, for one year as his quarterback coach. And uh, as you say, you know, we, we, we found enough enough ways to, to screw that thing up. And <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of lessons learned, but um, – was a great time for me. Great experience, obviously, as a young coach. And uh, I've learned a ton from it that I get I give to my guys every day, you know, lessons learned from from different things that we did during that time. Why, though, Ryan, Ryan Lindley, the offensive coordinator of San Diego State is with us. Why didn't you then say, look, I'm already in the NFL. I'm already a position coach in the NFL. Why don't I just try and find another quarterback coaching job or coach wide receivers? You've already coached running backs. Why did you not decide to stay in or try to stay, maybe you did, in NFL coaching? No, no doubt. Now, I was going to say, to be honest, I'll, I'll plead ignorance on that. Like, like really, with with how I was elevated so quickly in the game, I mean, I was a graduate assistant who really just wanted to volunteer with the offensive line. You know, Mike Schmidt was a buddy of mine I played with, and obviously was having some success here as an offensive line coach. So I figured, you know, be with a guy that I know and, and learn a little something from him. And obviously, as, as fate would have it, it elevated to a different direction. Um, so I really had no idea, you know, once I was fired, I was two years into coaching. I'm sitting at home in Cleveland without a job. And the only thing I got from some guys that were my mentors were just call anybody, you know, or you played for, you know, so I, I, you know, and I can't stand cold calling. So some of them, I look back and it's like, well, I played for this guy six years ago. I haven't talked to him since, but I have his number. So I'm cold calling Josh McDaniels, you know, and he's, he's answering the phone and being a nice guy. But at the end of the day, he don't got a job for me, you know? So 
all of this comes to fruition of I wait two or three months and COVID is also hitting at the same time. So it, it really worked out where I called Coach Ludwig, who same kind of thing. We had kept in touch limited, but uh, at the end of the day, they had an, they had a position open up as an analyst and uh, it just worked out that I could come in there and, and kind of the timing of it was rough because we were, we were virtual pretty much the, the first six months I was there, but this is where, is this at Mississippi state? This is at Utah. Uh, oh, okay. Public. So yeah, it, it, it kind of really was like a lot of things to be quite honest with you was, was luck and just being around the right people. So uh, Andy had a spot for me and, and kind of took me under his wing as he did when I played for him and um, definitely, definitely set me back in, in the right direction. And then how'd you get to where you were last year before you got back to San Diego state? Yeah. So that was, uh, like I said, you know, I always, I always tell any, any of our guys too, it's how you treat people, you know, in relationships and in this thing and in anything, um, uh, you know, Zach Arnett was the defensive coordinator when I was the graduate assistant here. So he, he, uh, you know, I had a situation where, you know, I was, I was kind of looking for some more growth and in, in my coaching experience and, we had just been talking simply as friends, you know, and, and he brought up the opportunity of, well, you know, I, it's the SEC. There's, there's quite a bit of money down here. I can, I can create a guy, you know, to, to basically get a spot and I had another guy leave. And so either way, it, it, things kind of came up where it just became an advantageous situation for me and uh, decided to decided to move on and try something new in, in uh, SEC country. So weird though, right? Like to, to change jobs in season, to go, oh, no from, to go from Mississippi State where you're coaching defense and come home to San Diego State, and now you're coaching, I guess it was quarterbacks last year, right? Yes, sir. I mean, in the middle of a season? Yeah. No, I'm, I'm – and I always say, like, you know, there, we have our coaches' convention. It was in January. And, you know, there's guys that get up and, and give clinic talks and speak on, you know, like how to climb the ranks in the coaching business, like any business, right, any convention. And, uh, you know, I, I've always looked at it as like, hey, my, I've been as unconventional – it gets you know you don't you don't leave places you know the, the positions I was in obviously as a graduate assistant you're you're very low on the totem pole even as an analyst you know, you're you're an auxiliary staff member and your 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 responsibilities can can range from a lot to a little you know so I did a lot still on the offensive side of the ball you know a lot of my thing was scouting running scout offense giving like a an insight into what the quarterback was thinking while I was coaching on defense anyway so my mind has always kind of been there on offense it's just uh I've been I've been dabbling and uh, on the other side of the ball and getting some secrets here and there when I could. Amazing story. Absolutely incredibly told. Ryan Lindley, the offensive coordinator at San Diego State, is with us. Fellas, uh, feel well, now free he's to here. jump in. Yeah, now he's now here. Now he's here. And yeah. I, I I made this like graphic. I don't have it right now, but of the the different I know you weren't here before, obviously, but once you got here, and obviously the offensive, the whole thing changed with Jalen coming in at quarterback. Um, what happened? Because it was an unrecognizable offense from the first few weeks to when you and, and Jeff kind of took over and Jalen took over. What happened? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I look back to it. We kept it simple. You know, um, I think obviously the situation was as wild as it gets. You know, And a lot of guys, I think, read the headline of, of safety turned quarterback. Now, that's, you know, that doesn't give the whole story of the fact that Moose was a four star quarterback coming out of high school that signed in an SEC West program. And, you know, he the ability was always there. It was it was the matter of putting him in a comfortable situation and getting it out of him. So that's right. I give Coach Horton so much credit. Obviously, not the not the ideal situation. You know, the guy who you go into the season with um, gets let go. Uh, you kind of have to pivot mid year and, and do that. So Coach Horton did a phenomenal job riding the ship there. And for me, it was really because I'm too right. I, I get here on a on a Sunday night or a Monday morning and. I'm learning the offense, you know, on, at, at warp speed. I'm teaching the kids what I know. I mean, I'll even admit there were times that there were guys in the room that, you know, Braxton was hurt at the time, but I'm even asking, asking Braxton some things like, okay, how was this taught before? What's the principle of this, blah, blah, blah. And I'll put my own spin on it, what I think works, you know, and evaluating the whole time. As we're getting ready to play Hawaii, I'm evaluating how they were taught before, given a little bit of, you know, kind of kind of tweaking what I think will work better, what we can improve on. So it, it was really a hundred miles an hour. And that's where I say to you, I, I give Horde a ton of credit. I give our kids credit because I think really the, the biggest thing is sometimes change can just be a catalyst. And I think that's the number one thing that that Moose brought to the table and Coach Horton did was, you know, hey, we're going to inspire these guys, put it in their hands and uh, just let them go play football and have fun. Hey man, listen, sometimes the best cooking is home cooking. Mm -hmm. And I, I say that in this way. You have done all these things. If you've been to all these places, then you went to defense, and then you came back to offense. And I think you saw something in that kid, and you saw something within this offense where the light went on. Because as a viewer, 
as a viewer. See, I'm honest. I'm not going to play no games. It ain't. It wasn't watchable. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a beautiful. That's a beautiful building. We yeah. love to coach on this show. He's a straight shooter, and you can't go wrong with a straight shooter. Ryan, this is Man, coming that, from a guy who bet me that San Diego State wouldn't throw for a hundred yards in the uh, last season, and, and then you can and then you came and won me that bet right away. Uh, <laughs> okay. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell. Unfortunately, he was playing law of averages prior to yeah, prior to that. Yeah, unfortunately, right. yeah. I I didn't believe it. I didn't believe it. You have made me a believer in the offensive efficiency of this school, of this of of, this, of what's going forward. I'm now on board because I need to be entertained. Okay, I I, I'm sitting down to watch these games in my time. I'm giving my time to this university. I got to get what I got to get to get to the stadium. Now it's only ten minutes from my house, but I still got to go through all I got to go through to get there to watch it. I can't get that time back. So please yeah. entertain me. You've done that. You are home. You in the kitchen. You cooking. You the chef now. What should we be looking forward to? Because now you're going into a second year, so now it's going to be expectations. I don't want to come out here and see no three yards in a cloud of dust from you. No, I, hear you. <laughs> I hear you. So I guess that one, one, I appreciate it because I, I agree with you. You know, the, the reality is um, sports is entertainment. You know what I mean? And, and at the end of the day, time is money. And the people that decide to spend time with us and come out to the stadium – we're appreciative of that because this you're in San Diego, baby. There's a lot of there's a lot of stuff you could be doing. So yeah, uh, yeah right. I, I know I'm always going to be an Aztec at heart, and wherever I'm at in the country in the world, I, I'm going to want to tune in. But uh, you know, I, I get it. I'm going to say that. So uh, our building is phenomenal. I went out there for Monster Jam a couple of weeks ago, and I still every time I walk through there, it's it's uh it's like why know, wasn't it here I when I was know, playing? But I, I and I listen the 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 there's some things about the old Murph that that I love too, but. Gosh, this, this Snapdragon is phenomenal. I'm, I'm yeah. really happy, happy to be back home, happy that our guys can play in there. But uh, I'll say this: the number one thing I will say, you know, and I don't want to, I don't want to give, uh, give too many, too much away. You know, the, the guys we play week one to three got to, got to, got to do their research too and get their work in. But I just put it like this: I'm, I'm teaching my son. He's two years old. He knows at this point. You put the square peg in the square hole. You put the round one in the round one. Okay. I, I have some ideas of what I want to do. Obviously, everybody wants to be really successful, score a ton of points. I just want to make sure, like we did with Moose, like Hort did, we need to do with our players right now, you know, and the transfer portal creates some opportunities to go out and find some players, you know, find some square pegs to fit in your square holes. But we're we're gonna we're gonna do what our players do successfully right now. So uh, I've preached on these guys. We're gonna get back to some basic stuff. So I, I'm not I'm not promising anybody we're gonna go out there. I know I spent some time with Mike Mike Leach. I was on the defensive side. This thing ain't gonna be air raid now. I'm gonna tell you that. Like, <laughs> and, and where I say, like I've said it before, there's a blueprint. Like the blueprint has been built, and what we have on campus right now, we're gonna run the football. Now we also have guys that can create explosive plays in the pass game, and we need to find a way to maximize those and hit on those when we can. And the number one thing is in this quarterback room because I think that's that's where it starts. So we have a guy that we've built some trust in. He's built some confidence in himself. Now he'd also tell you the last two weeks. He needs to play a heck of a lot better. So I, I've told him it it worked out to me, not perfectly, because we would have gone eight and zero and ran the table and done all that great stuff. But it's get it's lit a fire under him. He's gained enough confidence in himself and from the team. But these last two weeks lit a fire under him, knowing of okay, I had those those games right through for three hundred plus yards. I was dialed in. We were we were you know we were we were pushing the ball down the field. It was great. So we got to get these guys, these young guys that are going to step up. We got to get them back to that point where we're pushing the ball down the field getting guys on their heels and and being the aggressor being the hammer right you do you, do you know if last like off season he was just safety right he wasn't taking i, I believe was he I taking believe, and i you know i once again some of the stuff i yeah. was in here for so it's second right, third, right, right. But i believe is about this time like you know a month before spring ball uh when we were kind of getting back on campus where i think you know whether it was braxton coming in once again i'm speculating yeah it was around this time last year that he uh, he had switched to safety. Yes. Wow. So this Amazing. whole offseason of being quarterback, you got to assume he's going to be better, right? I mean, he's going to be just more comfortable at least. Hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Hundred percent. I would say yeah. we, we've already, you know, we're already we're already sitting down. He's he's been chomping at the bit to to get with some things, you know, just, just like in the in the system schematically, things that'll change, you know. Um, and and one really good thing is like knowing where Moose is coming from, you know. I mean, obviously the success he had, like I said, this, the old square peg square. 
we're going to do things that are catered to his game as well. Can, can we do something that? Can we do something again? This is for me to help. You got, him, you got ninety seconds, Browner. You got ninety it's gonna, seconds. It's, it's going to take me fifteen seconds. Let's get that young man a new number. He's going to be on billboards. <laughs> He's going to be on buses. He's going to be on bus stops and t-shirts. That number ain't going to cut it no more. Uh, I'll tell you what. When you when you look like that, but your name is Moose, you're already you're already <laughs> making your own mold. So I guess I guess that's his deal. He, 18's been 18's been his thing and. uh I'll tell you what, you, I, I'm with you. You know, it, it ain't the norm. I think Peyton Manning's the only guy. That's yeah, that Peyton Manning. Yeah. But uh, Moose, Moose is going to try too. I'll tell you what, he he moves around a whole lot different than the uh, than the other 18 did. So I'm excited <laughs> to keep letting him cut loose and get after it. Hey Ryan, last thing, and we'll have more conversations well before the season starts. But I'm just curious. So now will San Diego State recruit a different kind of player for quarterback? Will, will they recruit a guy who can run a a different style of offense than what's been run before your arrival? You know. And I, and I mentioned that, and I'm dead serious. Like I, I, the one, two things to me. I mean, accuracy is something that can be adjusted and and worked on a little bit. But I, I truly believe it's it's not necessarily a taught trait. Like you, you, you pick up a ball and, and you can throw it where you want to, or you really can't. You know, there's some things technically I'm going to work with our guys on. But uh, two things I'm working for are guys that are athletic, guys that are facilitators with the ball, um, um, and uh, and and accurate. You know, so. And that's why I say, like, I, I'm not going to recruit a lot of guys that, that look like I did coming out of high school. You know, the game has changed. Defenses are faster. Guys are getting after the quarterback. I need a guy that if I call – let's say I even call the wrong play. It's going to happen, okay? Or somebody messes up up front. I need a guy that I call an eraser, okay? He can erase those mistakes and still make it a positive play. And when you look back on what Moose did, that was a ton of his game. You know, it wasn't necessarily – he wasn't doing exactly – what I taught him every time because he had just gotten here a week and started playing quarterback. Right. But he reacted and made plays and was an eraser for us, made things yeah. right, got us moving the ball down the field. And that's where I say a lot of that is on him and on the kids that are out there on the field. Let me tell you, man, we got to go. But if uh, if you were coming into San Diego State now, you'd be like Travis Kelsey. You'd start as a quarterback and move to a tight end. <laughs> Seriously. Hey, Ryan, Ryan, we got to hustle. We got to go. Great to see you. Congratulations. You got a bunch of huge fans here, and we look forward to many more conversations. Thank you, Ryan uh, Lindley. Let's, let's get back together soon. I'll say, hopefully see you at Del Mar this summer. Absolutely. Stick around, All everybody. Right. We got a lot more to get to. We're in the Seven Mile Casino Studios here on Kaplan & Crew. All right, guys, wrapping things up. Um, I got to tell you guys, that conversation with Ryan Lindley was amazing. I mean, just, just to reestablish for everybody who he is, where he's from, where he's been, and to get him back home now and to hear what he's thinking about. And I realize, look, we're getting ready for the Super Bowl. We're not thinking about college football necessarily, but that's a fun conversation to have. He was great. What'd you guys think? Yeah, man, it was good to hear from him, man. It was good to hear, hear his direction, hear where he's been, where he's going. I like it. I believe in him, man. Like I said, I told y'all, he going to be the next head coach. Oh, I didn't want to say, I didn't well, want to say that to him because that's rude. It's, but. No, no, but it, it's, it's probably what San Diego State is hoping for that you know, let, I don't know how much longer Brady Hoke is going to be their coach. I don't remember how old Brady recently turned, and it's not like he's 80 years old. But I could see where San Diego State is thinking to themselves, this is our future head coach, but here's the thing. They're going to have to have a succession plan, and Brady's going to have to be on board. Otherwise, a young coach like this could have some success gone. and could be gone quickly. And hey, with well, all of the relationships that he has in the NFL, he could – I mean, listen, could you imagine Kevin O'Connell calls him and goes, hey, man, I know you're home, but bro. Come be our offensive coordinator. Listen, man, I think that and, is the kind of problem that you baby. want to happen. Absolutely, yes. Because if, if, that's a good if sign. that stuff's not happening, it's not going well. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. I agree 100%, man. I agree. So, yeah. Well, I, I was fun. like the, you know, the keep it, keep it simple, stupid method. You know, like just it is what it is. I know what I got. I know who I don't got. You know, you can you can watch Georgia and then you can watch San Diego State and you can tell the difference. So let's just not pretend to be something we're not. Let's just be good at what we are. Yeah. All right, listen, um, Alex, I want you to – let's get out of here because I'm fading and I know you're probably Dude, I just it. broke a fever in that conversation. Like really? I, I – it's it's hot in here right now. Really? It's hot in here right now, dude. Dude, I'm freezing Good. still. Everybody go. All right, we got to go. Happy birthday, Baby J. I see you soon. Wait, Aww. Baby J's birthday today? Yeah. Oh, she's she now? three or four? 50, it feels like yeah. she's four. Four. Damn. Congrats, brother. Congrats. Too fast. All right, man. Oh, dude, you think that's fast? Wait till your kids are in college. I, I no joke, Browner. I had a but I had a friend I, um, I I saw about two weeks ago. He was my first friend when I moved to San Diego. My very first friend. Our kids started playing. Well, they went to preschool together at two year at a year old, one year old. They were in preschool together. 
They played soccer together at five, six, seven. They played baseball together, the same thing. They graduated high school a year apart. And he and I ran into each other recently. And we said, his, his kids are in, one kid graduated college, two kids are in college. And I'm like, how did that all happen so fast? We, we were friends. Our, we had two kids. They were each one, each one was one year old. Here these kids are now. They're 21, 22. And they're all through high school and they're all through little league and they're all through, they're getting through college. I'm like, how did that happen? So if you think four happened mm. fast, just wait, brother. Mm. No, no. Thanks. All right. We got to go. We're out of here. We'll see you guys <laughs> tomorrow. Hopefully <laughs> we think we'll be back tomorrow. It depends on how Alex is going to be feeling. Peace out, everybody.